Doop 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 do. Okay. Hello everyone. Good evening. That's where I left off. Okay. Um welcome to a new Lego stream. Today we are building the planet Earth. Just the entire planet molded in Lego form. This is what I have so far. Uh, it, it's not much of an Earth. The Earth is very flat right now. The Earth is very flat. Will it be flat? Right now it is. This is what I have right now. This is the Earth. <laughs> this is D-Earth at the moment. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today? Uh, why so late? Because uh, this is when I felt like doing it. It was like 8 o'clock, and I'm like, I grossly, every time I have to move everything up here, like my monitors and my computer, and I know how long it takes to set all this up up in my kitchen, but even so, I still think that like, eh, I'll do it, it's fine. Took, took me like a good 40 minutes to hook all this up. My audio isn't working. Well, we're gonna fix that. There is gonna be an echo no matter what, because I'm in my kitchen and there's an echo. So that, that's gonna be no matter what. I'm not in my basement at the moment where I don't, I don't have a better microphone. It's not even like the microphone's problem. Um, but can you hear me? Because I don't have a... I, don't, I actually didn't bring my speakers up here for this because I didn't think I'd need it tonight. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? You know what? I know one thing I can do. Ah. Okay, how's that? Wait, input microphone, why is that in there? Hold up. And drop that. Okay. There we go. All right, how about that? I'm not sure which microphone it was coming out of, and I think even the one that it was, if it's this one, it, it was way too high. That should be a little bit better. Night stream, woo! Too quiet. All right. How about now? Audio check, one, two, three. What I can do is I can pull it up on my phone. I still can't hear you. Well, clearly... You can hear me, it's probably just not very loud. All right, here we go. Let's try that. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, because when I asked if people could hear me, people were responding yes or no, so I'm like, all right. All right, that sounds better. Why don't I get my speakers? Because it's a pain in the ass to go down again for the downstairs again for the 12th time. Okay, so. Everybody good? Uh, there's going to be an echo no matter what because we're in my kitchen right now. So that's just not the way it's going to be. Um, sounds fine. It's good now. All right. Just had to, it's also a different microphone than I'm usually using. I usually use my Shura. This is a snowball. So that's better in terms of not really better. It's just, it's just easier to hook up than the Shura. Um, I missed the first part. Well, there wasn't a first part. I did all of this off camera because this is the biggest project I've ever done. And the idea of doing this in one setting would be long. This, this probably took me like four hours just with these. So this is just the stand and then the part of the earth here. So we're actually starting by putting together the continents. Like that is what the first thing we're doing here. We're already on like the seventh bag of material out of like 15 or 16. Um, I feel like the chat is on a huge flat screen TV. It is on a huge flat screen TV because I need to be able to see it right in front of me and that's the best way to do it. You predicted the future. <laughs> I have a giant TV, not a giant TV. It's like a 30 inch flat screen right over here. This is a normal monitor over here. Will America be first? No, 
Uh, much like the human species, we're actually starting in Africa. Uh, the way that I think if we're basing this off of, I think the first countries that are going to be built is like Cameroon and like the Central African Republic based off of this diagram here. So we're going to like, whoa, <laughs> no, it just shatters everywhere. And I'd be like, okay, end of stream. I'm not building that again. All right. So we got this thing here and this basically represents the equator and we're going to build up and then down. Of course, there is no up or down, but we're going to build up and then down. And then uh, we're going to be attaching stuff along the side here. So we're basically going around the equator first. So it's going to be Africa, Indonesia, loop around to South America. We're, we're going to do that first. And then I guess we're going to add, I don't know if we're going north or south first, but we'll figure it out as we go. Zawuruldo! Yes, I was waiting. I was waiting for somebody to do that in the Dio voice. Teching builds Zawuruldo! <laughs> there he goes. Okay. So. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fantastic. All right. It, it's very nice in telling me exactly where to start building <laughs> it's it's very nice position the yellow part over there this yellow pin here this red pin here and start building start building actually i think we're over by like the ivory coast i think that's where the first area we're building here why is it not flat <laughs> it's the earth the earth is not flat Dude, dude, dude. So I don't know how long we're going to... I don't know. I have no idea. Depends how quickly we build. I'm going to try to... I, I've done this before with the pyramid. And, you know, I'm trying to talk to the chat while also doing this. And if I move too quickly, I'm going to mess it up. But I try to maintain, like, an equilibrium to kind of like figure out to talk to the chat while doing this at the same time. So we're going to try to find this sweet spot balance here. And move quickly, but also efficiently, but also smartly. All right, so there, there we go. There we go. That's part of Africa right there. That's like, I think, like that's where like, like where Gabon is and Equatorial Guinea and stuff like that. The places that are around the equator. Okay, chat, let the guy focus. No, we, we're doing a chat. So, like, we got a super chat. So, I got to interact with the chat. It's just going to be a juggling act. And I don't know how to juggle beyond two. So, it's going to be fun. In the beginning, there was nothing. God said, let there be Wang Shi. And it was good. And it's good. In the beginning. <laughs> okay, let, let's, let's picture this. Since I am creating the Earth, we're going to probably talk about gods at some point in this video here. Uh, here's a question for you. And this is something I bring up every now and then. Uh, what would the world have been like if Dio would have won? Let's say Dio wins. He kills Jotaro. He kills Joseph. He kills all the Stardust Crusaders. Like, Dio just wins. All right? What does the world look like? Like, wh what happens, you know? Like, how good is Dio at... First of all, would Dio be able to rule the world? Like, he just defeats all the militaries? Because it was the 1980s. Like, the nuclear bomb existed when Dio was doing the whole thing in Egypt, you know? Maybe he could have done it back in the Victorian era. But by the 1980s? Was he even just mobilized, just mobilized everything? It gets discombobulated. Busty vampire women everywhere. Damn it, Dio! <laughs> That's his platform. Oh, does Dio try to, like, does he not try to take over the world directly? Does he try to, like, run for president or, like, prime minister or something first? Is is that really Dio's style, though? Is that how he does things? Ah, see? I'm already messing up. I'm already messing up. <laughs> great. We're already starting off great there. Yeah, see, that's that's not the balance. We, that was not the correct balance. Dio was bi, though. Okay, so sexy, 
big busted vampire women and sexy, super muscular uh, vampire dudes everywhere. Okay, I mean, it's the same basic idea. So far, it's not sounding that bad, to be honest with you. Imagine Luffy trying to build this. Yeah. Oh, we got a spammer. All right. I'm just going to straight up remove you because you know, I don't know what the hell you're doing there, but you're doing something, and that's not fun. Okay. All right, so that was, that was not good. I was building the same countries twice, so there was going to be two Ivory Coasts there for a bit. Okay. Uh, no spamming. Yeah, spamming's kind of the one thing. Alright. Leave that. Oh my god, it's very nice and it tells me leave this one section open. Alright. Alright. Waking up sick is the worst thing. Like, so many of my friends are sick today. Like, I, like usually this is our D&D &D night or, like, game night or something. I'll be hanging out at my friend's place. But uh, they got sick. And we had to cancel. And I'm doing this tonight. Which is good because I need to... Well, it's not good my friends are sick. But it's good because I've been putting this off for a while and I really need to get this done. Because this has been just sitting in my other room for a long time and um i want to get this done already okay building it through where are we at uh we're at i think i just built i think we're in the middle of uh the democratic republic of the congo i think we're just building oh we're building like the desert area like around somalia i think like where the mountains are so there's like the mountains in ethiopia and on one side it's very green and then on the other side it's desert I think, I think we're on that part right now. It's the idea. Uh, we wish it was the Halo. It was Halo? What about Halo? Yeah. I'm building Bleach Theme Max and Halo Infinite Forge. I don't know. Is Halo still big? Is Halo still like... A, I mean, I know it's obviously a game, but is like the community still alive and everything's going good? Because I only remember Halo from like... When I was in... No, this is not the Pacific Ocean. This is the Indian Ocean. Get your oceans right. <laughs> um, I remember, like, Halo... Because, like, I never really played it that much. So I just remember... No, it's dead. <laughs> nope, Halo's dead. Halo's dead now. Sorry, Tekking. I just have, like, the view of Halo from, like, when I was in, like, you know, sophomore year of high school, right? You know, going down my friend's place and playing Halo down there. And I only played it a little bit. Not not much. All right, I think I don't look at put that in the right place, but I don't think it matters. All right, I think we're moving out now, and we're moving around the earth, and now we're building, like, um, more into, like, we're getting to, like, Malaysia and, like, Indonesia now. Okay. So you can kind of see, like, where we're at right now. So there you go. So, like, this little section is, like, um, yeah, hold on, is that the edge of Somalia there? Yeah, so, like, this edge is, like, Somalia, and now we're moving into the Indian Ocean. We're kind of going around this way. Kind of see it? Kuzon is Dio. Uh, have I fall heard of the Fallout series? So, Fallout is another game that I have never played. I've never even played a single one. Um, a fan of mine years ago, like, when I first started... Ooh, it's raining. When I first started accepting fan mail, sent me um, New Vegas, and I was all hyped to play it, and I kind of just never did. I kind of just forgot about it. So that's that's a game I never really got into. Fallout and Halo. I played a lot of Modern Warfare when I was in high school. I'd go down to my friend's place on the weekends, and we would always play Modern Warfare uh, World at War. With, like, Nazis, Nazi zombies and everything like that. I don't know if that word is cool on YouTube now, but I'm using it in the context of World at War. There was a subsection of the game called Nazi zombies where you go around and you shoot Nazi zombies. I'm just going to stop talking about that game for right now. New Vegas is sick, yeah. Am I ever going to visit China? 
Uh, well, I'm going to London later this year, so you got to start somewhere, right? Maybe eventually I'll make my way to China. It would be fun to travel, like, the world world, like, by the end of my life. I'm, like, I've been to over, you know, 150 countries or something. I don't know if I'll be able to visit every single one of them. But, uh, it'd be cool to see as much as I can. And I'm already 30, so I kind of got to get on it. I'm going to London. Yep, London! Oh, wait, no, that's the right one. Okay. All right. I am building the earth. Thoughts on X-Men 97. I've never seen it. <laughs> so far, people are giving me, uh, asking me about shows and video games I've never played. Uh, I saw the original X-Men 97 back in 1997, and I liked it enough. But I've never been much of a comic book kid, you know? I've never been much of a comic book guy. All right, so skip the next two. I guess we're in the heart of the Pacific now, I guess, because there's just a big expanse of nothing. So here we have Africa, center, Central Africa, and then there's the Indian Ocean, and then this is just all of um, Indonesia, and now I guess we're just getting into the Pacific, into the heart of the Pacific. Uh, one more section, one more section here. And then that'll be it. Will I post this stream after? Yeah, it'll be uploaded after. I watched your old videos. You're awesome. Well, thank you. My old stuff... You know, I keep it up on the channel just for the sake of like, hey man, this is where I came from. This is the first videos I made. I just want to have that out there. All right, so you're going to skip to and then put the Pacific Ocean up. Okay. Just in the middle of the Pacific. We're at like Point Nemo. I think Point Nemo is a little bit below the equator, but right around there. X-Men Evolution was better than the original. Oh, cool. I didn't watch the original that much. I saw a few episodes here and there, but if you asked me to like... I remember watching the first episode with Jubilee. I liked... I like Gambit, and I was kind of upset that that Gambit movie, there was going to be a Gambit movie a while ago, and it never happened. Remember those weekly third? Oh, yeah. Dude, back when Bleach and Naruto and One Piece were the big three, in the very beginning, I, um, I reviewed all three of them the same day, and that just blows my mind right now that I used to do that, but they were very quick reviews. They weren't even with like the chapter, like maybe I'll throw one or two images from the chapter in the video, but it was mostly just me sitting there just like 10, 15 minutes each. Like here's the Naruto chapter. Here's the One Piece chapter. Here's the Bleach chapter. Let's go. You know, gotta go, but love your channel. Thank you. You're the first person I've seen with the Mashal manga. Yeah. Mashal was really good. And I really like the um, opening of season two. I didn't really care for it at first. Like, bing, bong, bong, bing, bong, bong, bing, bong, bong, blue. You know, and I, I didn't care for it at first. I'm like, this is such a weird song. But after like the fourth or fifth time listening to it, I'm like, this is a banger, dude. This is really good. All right. So we have built Indonesia, Central Africa, and now we're looping around to South America. So we're entering like... Chile, Peru kind of area, so skip to, and then this, this square right here. All right, so we're getting into, like, Chile kind of Inca Empire territory now. All right. Have you ever played any Grand Theft Auto games or Red Dead Redemption? Okay, now we're talking about games that I've actually played. Uh, I played Red Dead Redemption, uh, the zombie one. I never had... I did have the, um... Years later, and I still have it, I think, on the PS4. There was, like, a re-release of it or something. But I do have the original Red Dead Redemption. I just never played it. But, um... The, the zombie DLC I played, and I really enjoyed that. I didn't understand most of it, like, in terms of the storyline, because I never played the original. But I, um... I liked it. Have to say I liked it a lot. And uh, probably played it all the way through, I think, twice. 
And then with uh, Grand Theft Auto, I don't have as much of experience with that. Um, with Grand Theft, uh, played a little bit of four when I was in high school, and then when five came out, friends were a little bit into that. Played that a little bit down their place, but not really way. And I've never owned a Grand Theft Auto game. I'm playing Red Dead Two Redemption, Red Red Dead Redemption Two right now. I've played. I got out of the tutorial. I got out of the mountains in the, like the snowy area. I got out of that. And then it was like right after that that I stopped. Uh, but then again, that was back when I was living at my mom's place. And like playing video games in my old bedroom wasn't the best setup. Because it was just on my bed and there was like not great back support or whatever. Now I have like a chair that can like fold out. Like I have a recliner. So it's way more comfortable for me to play video games now. Um, so that's why I'm playing a lot more of them. So... Uh, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll take another crack at Red Dead Redemption 2. Have I played Time Splitters? No. Have I ever smoked weed? Uh no, I have not. Not opposed to it, but just never have. Never felt like the real need to like I need to smoke some weed. But if I ever did, I have plenty of friends that could hook me up. <laughs> I know plenty of people that know what their shit is when it comes to that. So I will be in good hands. Okay. Bing bong bong bing bong bong bing bong bong boo. Bing bong bong bing bong bong. Weed experts. Stoning. You've been Dr. Stoned. Okay. And now we're in the Atlantic. Oh no, guys. I think we lost the Atlantic Ocean. We lost the Atlantic. Oh no. It's gone. Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. Guys, guys, the Atlantic Ocean's gone. Oh, man. Do you know why it's called the Atlantic Ocean? For the longest time, I thought it was because Atlantis. I thought it was like Plato came up with the story of Atlantis, and that's why we call it the Atlantic Ocean. But no, the, the origin and the etymology of Atlantis, and I think the, the origin, the etymology is the same for Atlantic Ocean and Atlantis, but it, it, they don't come from each other. It comes from something even before that. Okay. Okay, we got the Atlantic, and now we're building, like, um, like, Cape Verde and stuff like that, like, on the edge of Africa. Okay. And then I think after that we will be done with this section, and I'm going to have to build a whole new part of the Earth, which that's going to be fun. Okay. So, um... Barry's back there getting high. Oh, yeah. Barry smokes a bunch of shit. Barry was the friend I was talking about. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ooh. Here we are. Check that out. You can kind of see it. So, it's like, there's South America. There's the Pacific. Being very careful not to drop this thing. There's Indonesia. Africa. There we go. All right. Now, we need to build even more. Throw all these in here. Would you ever make a Black Clover video? I made a lot about Black Clover, about Noct, though. He's the last of the members of the Black Holes I haven't spoken about. So I probably should. Oh, wait. We're not done yet. There's still more. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait. No. Wait. Wait. I think I have to open a new bag. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get done with this tonight, is the idea. <laughs> Even after doing half of this, I still might have been way in over my head. Yeah, the hollow earth model. Turns out, it's hollow. It turns out it looked like this the whole time. Who would have thunk it? We're going to put, like, a bunch of dinosaurs and, like, mystical, like, lava caverns and, like, crystal caves under here. It's going to look really neat. Trust me. 
Oh, man. Okay, um... I need... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what happened. I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay, I need to... I get to skip these steps. Yeah, I already built this. I already built this. This is that thing. I already built this. Okay, all right, here we go. Bag eight. Bag eight. All right, we're good. We're getting back to it. All right, yeah. Nice. Bag number eight. Okay. The globe. The globe. Where will you put the ancient civilization? I'm thinking um, putting the ancient civilization in the North Pole or the South Pole. Let me know which one is colder, and then I will put it in the opposite one. Baguette. <laughs> it actually is written in French on the side. Global Terra Cuco. <laughs> At least I think it's French. Pretty sure. Okay. Do you, did you do your own editing on that or did you have an editor? No, I edited that myself and it took, focus, focus. I edited that video myself and it took upwards of like 16 hours. It was a long video to edit. So that's why like, dude, that video, um, I mean, you could probably tell, but I didn't really make that video with like my mainline audience in mind. Uh, if you watched it and enjoyed it, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, but the idea was, like, I wanted to make a video as, like, to help people get into the story. Right? And most people, I feel, watching my channel are, are caught up to it. So, uh, yeah, it, it took a very long time to edit that. Uh, but the way it turned out, I'm pretty happy with. Now, uh, I, I was also trying to make it kind of viral. Like, that was the whole idea. Like... Oh, okay, I'm seeing these um, description-based videos coming out. Like these def definition videos a lot of make people are making, like the Paint Explainer and a few other people that are copying that uh, format. So I'm like, okay, let's try to do one based on One Piece because I, I, I think there's enough stuff in One Piece to make an entire video about this. So I did that, and uh, it has like 40,000 views right now. It's not like a lot, but like it wasn't a video that I was planning on having like a crazy big following like the second I put it out. Three weeks taking a toll. Yeah, so I'm building the planet Earth. Okay. La. Okay. So now we're installing these things. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's bags upon bags. I already knew this. I'm already, we're already on bag eight. Technically speaking, we're making really good progress. The stream's only been up for less than 30 minutes. And we're already, uh, we're already on bag number eight. Man, we'll be done in no time, guys. We'll be done in no problem at all. Teching is building one of Robin's breasts. Uh, yeah. You know what? You laugh about that, but we do know Robin's measurements. I couldn't measure the, the circumference of the, you, you know, we, we do. They might actually be smaller, actually, than, yeah, I don't know. Um, have you ever read Zatch Bell? Yes. I, I never read it, but I watched it. And I have to say, uh, it was pretty good from what I remember. I actually think I'm going to move this over because I need more space. Yeah. Zatch Bell! You know who's got the power. You know who's gonna cast the spell. And I'll take the tank of days. I don't remember the whole song, but like, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, now here's the shit. There's two of these. One is smaller, one is longer. And I'm not sure which one to use. So, we're gonna have to guesstimate on this. I think it's the longer one. It looks like it's the longer one, so I'm gonna do that. When in doubt, use the longer one. Okay. I'd be down for another Robin video. Oh, I always am. Like, that's not even, like, that doesn't even need to be debated. There actually is a Robin video on the wheel. Uh, involving Olvia, actually, because somebody brought up that Olvia has, like, uh, like, darker complexion, and she has white hair, 
So somebody is like, what if she's descended from the Lunarians? And I'm like, because it was, it was specifically like, like, she's the only character that has white hair that's not like an old person that is, uh, aside from King. It's King and Olvia. And like everybody, like Garp and stuff and Sengoku have white hair, but they're like old. Yeah. So that was an interesting theory somebody threw out there. So I added it to the wheel, but I might, I might do it even, you know, like if it never comes up on the wheel, I might still talk about it at some point. I guess, okay, Gloriosa too. So there's not very many. There's not very many. Where is your jacket? Uh, I left it downstairs. Though I should put it on. It is kind of cool. And I, I have the air on right now. Okay, so we've made this. This thing. Yeah. Have I heard of Freeren? Yes, I have. I have no idea what the anime is about. Because I haven't seen it yet. But it's the one everybody's... It's, it's the anime of the season. There's always an anime of the season that everybody loves, and that's the one right now, and I have no idea how to fucking put this on here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right, all right. It has to be two notches over. Okay, so I guess right there. I guess right there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now we're cooking. Okay. Uh, no, another one. No, not that one. Mm, this one, maybe? Yeah, yeah, this one, maybe. Okay, cool. It feels D&D inspired. Oh, okay. I missed the first few minutes, sorry. It's okay, man. It's all right. We haven't been doing much here. Sulon Carrot has white hair. That's a very particular instance. Okay. So we made this thing. Congratulations, you made this. Okay, great. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> um, I guess another one of these. That was the right size. So we're doing all right there. Sword collection video showcase. I, I have some swords, but like, I only have like four or five. Oh, you mean swords like, oh, the katana? If you include all the katanas, like the fake, like the ones downstairs that are just like for decoration. Yeah, I have a lot more. But I do have some up here that are actual, like, weapons. What's my favorite Robin outfit post-time skip? Um, you know, I will say my favorite Robin outfit pre-time skip is the one she had at Thriller Bark. The, like, purple kind of lacy dress thing. That was pretty cool. Um, honestly, the egghead outfit is, is really cool. Probably don't don't think about that in any other context. It's just the egg hat outfit looks cool. There's there's no other reason. No other reason. Alright. Hi from Micronesian Islands. Hello there. Micronesia. Dress Rosa Robin is number one. Okay. Dress Rosa Robin's outfit is not much. It's it's just a simple dress, and the f I like the hat. I like the poofy hat she wore. It's just the um, it's the plunging neckline that does it for a lot of people. Okay, okay, so we're doing this. Aha! See, they combine. They combine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, oh, wrong, wrong side. No, wait. Ah, oh, shit, I fucked something up. All right, hold, wait, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. There, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Yeah, 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 I got it. There you go. Now, knowing my luck, yeah, I'm just gonna have to do this like six more times. <laughs> yeah. You should make a live stream where you get the fair to get fried Oreos. I should. I love fried Oreos. My fried Oreo kick. The, the first post time skip outfit is is really good too. Yeah, the one where she's just the zip up. Yeah. I remember there was an SBS question that was just um Oh, these are different ones though. Okay. I remember there was an SBS question that was just why does Robin show off her cleavage so much? <laughs> and I can't remember how Oda responded to that actually.
But I remember that. Hey, hey, Oda, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but Robin tends to wear outfits that show off her cleavage a lot. What? Why does she do that? Like, is that a... What, what's going on there? <laughs> I'm sure Oda's response was very serious. Okay. First time chatting here. Hello. Drippiest One Piece character. Okay, so Doflamingo somehow made dressing with that giant feathery boa and like making a do making a flamingo his whole aesthetic seem threatening as hell. Okay? So, props for him, I guess. He was able to pull that off. Uh does Oda even draw the girls with underwear even more? So, like, I, I don't know what you're asking if he draws women with underwear. Th there was a message he did say where he was, like, moving away from the boobs and he's drawing more butts. Like, there was some kind of thing where Oda said, like, yeah, I'm, I'm working on drawing butts better now. So maybe that's why in Egghead you just have characters running around in, like, you know, bikini bottoms and that's it. You know, like, you could call them, like, I, I always imagine it's more like swimsuits rather than, like, panties or whatever. But, yeah, I'm just here to see your kitchen. All right, well, here's my kitchen. Here's my island. Here's my bananas. <laughs> I got my bananas back there. They're not quite ripe yet. They're a little more green. You can see they're a little green on the top, but they're getting there. Yeah. All right, I got to fit. Oh, wow. Okay, I got to. There's very intricate pieces here. Okay. Intricate pieces. Okay, put that through that. Oh my god, okay. And then fit that through here. Okay. And then fit that through here. This is sounding very, very normal. And fitting that through here. Okay, and then put that through this one. Okay, all right, and then have I seen the last One Piece episode? Yes, the one with Luchi versus Luffy. Very good stuff. Okay. All right, put that through that, and then oh, I see what they're doing. I see how to, aha, yeah. There we go. Ooh, is it supposed to... Hmm. Is this supposed to lock in? Or is it supposed to turn? I feel like this is supposed to lock in. But I can't tell. Ah! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, the scene where Luffy is, like, going to punch Luchi, and it's, like, bouncing around, and the music's going up and everything like that, and then the music just stops, it's just... It just, Luchi's like, oh, shit. And he just gets punched in the face at, like, Mach 2. Is he reading chats? Yes, I just have to balance both. So, might not be super responsive, but I'm trying. Okay. There. All right, we built this. Now I need to do another one of these. Same thing. Oh, my God. Then I'm going to need to build... Oh, my God. We're going to... All right, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I... You know what? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. We're at least gonna get Europe done tonight. <laughs> do you have any pineapple juice? I do. I do. I don't have any on me right now, but I have some in my fridge. We can have some pineapple juice. I think there is mango in it, though. I can keep on moving as long as I got that pineapple juice. All right. Or I can keep on going. I, I always mess up the song. I mess up the song every time I sing the song. And Rustage always tells me, you're not even singing it right. But it's fine. As long as you have pineapples in your heart, you're good. Okay. Teching. Zawarodo. Zawarodo indeed, yes. I wonder if they will reuse music for the One Piece adaptation. Okay, you know what? I don't know if this is a hot take or what. I hope it's a completely different soundtrack. 
Because to me, what's the point of redoing an entire anime while the new... Well, the current anime is still airing while the new anime is going to be airing. So what's the point of doing the exact same soundtrack? At that point, I'm like, you know what? Experiment with stuff, you know? Like, the live action has its own soundtrack. I know there's, like, Overtaken and everything. There's, like, there's iconic One Piece soundtracks. And they're always going to be there in the first adaptation. You're always going to have them. Like, Overtaken is never going away. Like, the walk to Arlong Park with Overtaken is never going to not be a thing. But what if they made a soundtrack that was just as good, if not better? And you might say, no, they can't do any better than that. And I'm like, well, you don't know because we've only seen it from one perspective. They could do something else. Just because. It's like, hey... You know, Ichigo going to fight Biakio with number one playing like, Now you feel like number one, shining bright for everyone. You know, it's like, hey man, you can't get any better than that. It's like, well, who's to say? Maybe you could. Maybe you could. All right? Break expectations. But no, seriously. I mean, like, there's no point, I think, them using the exact same fucking soundtrack when... You know, there's, it's, a, it's a different show. It's a different adaptation. If they get the Attack on Titans composer to remake the soundtrack. <laughs> Dude, you know what? There's, I think it could work. I think there's different soundtracks you could do that still make the scene work just as good. If Maybe not, maybe if better. Maybe even better. I would say go into it with an open mind. Go into it with an open mind and be like, hey man, Overtaken's gonna be really hard to top. It's not going to be easy, but it's not impossible, you know? Ichigo is Bleach. Yes, Ichigo is indeed Bleach. I mean, there's probably another character in another anime named Ichigo. Who's your favorite? Who's your second favorite Ichigo in anime? Shiro Sagisu is the perfect choice for Bleach. Yeah, I mean, that's... They got the best person for that. Yeah. The soundtrack of Bleach is one of the just undeniably best soundtracks like ever so damn good not that one I feel like number one shining bright for everyone and up your fantasy okay all right here we go hi from new zealand hello one piece ends in 2025 news going around uh, you know, I've heard that from a couple of people. I actually heard that from somebody that I know. The thing is, though, like, when One Piece ends, that's going to be, like, an announcement. Like, they're going to come out and Shonen Jump and be like, One Piece, 20 chapters left, or three months left. Like, that happened with Naruto. Naruto had, like, hey, uh, 15 chapters left, and then it's over. You know, we had, like, a heads up with Naruto. We had a heads up with Bleach, too. But, um, that was just a whole debacle, and we all know how that ended up. Have you ever been to Harmony? Yeah, I've been to Harmony plenty of times. My mom enters the Harmony Fair. So I'm there at least once a year. I've entered some stuff in the Harmony Fair, and I've won a couple. I, went, I entered my peppers a few times, and I've won... The Harmony Grange Fair. Pepper reveal. Uh, maybe, maybe at some point. It's a little bit further up here. No one, no chance One Piece ends next year. I'm going to say no. I am going to say no. When that news finally breaks, it is going to be a very big deal. It's going to be on national news. It's going to be on every major network in Japan easily. That One Piece is ending in like 20 chapters or 30 chapters or whatever the hell. It is going to be news. Do not worry. You will hear about it. 
It's not just going to be something that'll be murmuring in the depths of the internet. You, you will hear about it in a big way. My favorite Bleach movie is probably... Ooh, that's tough. I mean, Hellverse is cool as shit, just from the music and the fights and the premise. Fade to Black features Rukia as, like, one of the main... Like, evil Rukia. Diamond Dust Rebellion sucks, because... I, I just think the plot is crap, but also I don't like Toshiro really that much. But um, it, it was made because Toshiro was, like, the most popular fucking character. So they are like, we need to give Toshiro a movie. Dude, in that regard, kind of wish it would have been, like, Kempachi or somebody. You know, out of all of the captains. Because the implication there is whoever was the most popular character was getting a movie. So if it was Kempachi, we would have gotten the Kempachi movie. If it was Mayori, we would have gotten the Mayori movie. That would have been fucking cool. I mean, Toshiro is like, look, I don't hate him, but he's just kind of to me is just like, ah, eh, he's, eh. He's a generic anime ice guy. <laughs> just He fights with ice. He's cool. His fights are neat, I guess. Never really cared about him too much. Um, so you know what? I, I think I'm honestly going to go with Memories of Nobody. Because... The, the, the tone of that movie is so much more somber than the other ones. Like, the final scene where Senna is, like, disappearing. Spoilers for memories if nobody. But that final scene, dude, where Senna is, like, disappearing, and she's, sh she's so sure that she exists. Like, she's just... The whole movie, it's kind of the question of, like, does she exist? Is she a real person? Because she has all these memories, but... Their memories that are like the conglomerate of like a bunch of other people make made manifest in her. Love your Android shirt. Thank you. So at the end of the movie, she's like fading away. And uh, Ichigo's carrying her on her back. And this really somber uh, soundtrack's playing. Always be with me in mind. I think that was the... Always be with me in my mind. I think that was the name of the soundtrack. Well, anyway, that's playing in the background. And they go to this cemetery, and Senna is like, Ichigo, I can't see anymore. What what does the grave say? It, it says my name, right? And Ichigo looks at it, and it doesn't say her name. So she doesn't really... I mean, she does exist because she exists, but like she wasn't a, a, like a human at one point. It was like a collection of other you know memories and stuff. So Ichigo looks at it and, and doesn't see her name. And he just looks to her and just lies and just says, yeah, it's, it's your, I see it here. I see your name. It's, it's here. You were real. And Senna's like, thank you. And then, she, and then she just disappears. That movie is so, I mean, that, like that last scene alone is I think worth it. All right. Hold on a second here. Oh man. Come on, get in there. Is this the right one? Yeah, is the right one. Ah, there we go. Guys, don't forget to drop a like. Uh, yeah, 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 if you want to. I mean, I you care. Used his kid as Vegapunk 7. Yeah, I saw that because of um, when he goes into his rail gun. When he goes into his rail gun. Aha, see, we made another one. Okay, there we go. We have two of these. Okay, awesome. When he goes into his rail gun form, there's a 7 written on it. So that means, therefore, he's the seventh Vegapunk. <laughs> when am I going to play Pirate Warriors 3? I don't know. Probably, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I want to say definitively yes or definitively no, because I'm not sure. Probably not going to watch the Fallout series, because like I said, I don't really have much of a connection to that game. So I don't really, it, it's not really something that is like on my list of like, wow, I need to watch this. Maybe, um... Maybe I'll check it out at some point if uh, the fates ordain it, I guess. If I just run across it or if I'm hanging out at a friend's place and they're watching it or something. But as it stands right now, not in a huge hurry to check that out. But I hope it's good. I hope everything, like any kind of adaptation, like movie or live action or anything that involves people's like cherished video game franchise is I, I hope it turns out good because 
we all deserve stuff that's better than like the Cowboy Bebop adaptation or Dragon Ball Evolution. Dude, I think the guy that played Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution, like when Toriyama died, he like put out a release that was put out like a tweet or something that was like, dude, Toriyama, I'm so sorry we fucked up that movie. I'm so sorry we fucked that up. We tried our best. Like the actors tried their best. I mean, I don't blame the actors. That whole premise of that movie was just, ugh. Carrots in the game! Oh, well, now I have to play it. Sue Long Carrot Mode! Nah. Any video games you're playing? Well, I just finished Persona 3 not too long ago. And uh, really enjoyed that, the reload mm -hmm. version. So that, that, that kept me busy for about a month. Excuse me. You put this through that, you put the Lego. Do 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 do. Whoa. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. I did a Dalton video a while back. Yeah, I need to do that Dalton. Dalton's awesome. Dalton's a really cool character. Just like a more sensible kind of guy. Just like, yeah, uh, well, Wapple took over this place, but now he's gone, and now I'm the new ruler, I guess, and just trying to make it by. He's a cool guy. He's very sensible. He's a very sensible character that has a very level head. You don't see that very much in anime. He's just a guy that knows how to do shit. Okay. Connect the dots. Right, now we're doing this. All right. You still reading Yomi no Sugai? I have to get caught up. Um, I'll go like a couple of months and not read a chapter, wait for it to build up a little bit. And then I'll go through and read a bunch at once. So definitely need to get back into that. It's been probably like a good three months since I read the chapters. I probably have like, I probably have like three, three chapters to read. Something like that. Okay. I'm adding these little, like, robot claw things. And I, well, actually, I have another camera. Hold on. Second camera! These little robot arm things it's making me do. So, we'll see what that turns out. Your house looks so nice. Thank you! I cleaned it up uh, the other day. I just did a general sweeping and cleaning the floors, opening all the windows. It was very nice the other day. We had a really nice week in terms of the weather. So opened up all the windows, swept the floor, cleaned the floor, you know. Just made everything look nice. Yeah, and he introduced us to zones, absolutely. All right, what was I working on here? Oh, this thing. All right, uh, some weird arm thing. Eh, uh, that's, that's what I was supposed to make. Oh, oh, and now we add the plating to it. All right, that's cool. Leg, this is real Lego plating, the hardest material known to man. I did start watching a new anime yesterday. Um, that somebody recommended to me. It's, um, I have no idea when it came out. There's a dub of it. Uh, I feel like it's fairly recent because I've never really heard anybody talk about it up until recently. It's, uh, Hike, uh, Hokkaido Gals Are Adorable. And the premise is about a guy moving to Hokkaido and just, it's, it's kind of like a haremish anime. I've only seen the first two episodes, but like, dude... In the English dub, they give... Because Hokkaido is, like, north of... Is northern Japan. So there's, like, an accent. So in the English dub, they give the characters, like, Canadian accents. <laughs> Which, that alone makes it great. It just... It's just... Peak slice of life in that. Dude, I honestly gotta tell you, 
I'm really enjoying the... It's only the first two episodes, so they could they could completely go a different direction with it. But I really like the way that the relationship between the MC is. Uh, with, I think her name is Fuyumi, because Fuyu is winter, so obviously her name is has winter in it. But it, it, it plays out like, like they're super flirty in, like, the first episode in two. And, like, like, they're very clearly, like, into each other. But they don't play it up for, like, yeah, we're just gonna tease this for, like, 150 episodes, and then they finally get together. Like, it seems, like, very clear. Like, basically, by the second episode, I'm like, you guys are a couple at this point. Like, you know. Uh, the... Ah, uh, Canada. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuyuki. It's Fuyuki. Had Fuyu in it. I knew that much. It's a very wholesome romance manga. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, um... When I was, because I, I read the English version of the um, the title, which was Hokkaido Gals Are Adorable, and I'm like, okay, and I'm watching it, and then when Fuyuki showed up, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, did they translate it from Gyaru to Gal? And I looked it up, and the original, the original name of the anime is Gyaru, and I'm like, okay, now, because Gal is like... Yeah, it's a term for a girl, but you don't really hear it that much. Like, that seems like a 1950s kind of thing. Like, you know, like, hey, check out that gal over there. You don't really hear gal that much anymore. It's kind of like an oldish term for a girl. So I was like, like, I was watching it and I was like, oh, she's Gyaru. So did they just take Gyaru? Because that's gy gal, Gyaru is like close enough. I get it. Yeah. You're building a Lego planet Earth. Yes, yes. Gal pal. Yeah, I guess, but I'd never heard, I've never heard anybody in my social circle use the term gal pal before. <laughs> if you have, great. I've heard it used. I've just, not in like my own life have I heard that term used. I have to make another one of these. This is actually not bad though, because I, I've, I've built it before, so I can kind of just go on autopilot, so I can kind of react to the chat while doing this, because it's basically build the same thing four times in a row. I've created an archive for your four kids stream. I'm able to cover two. Uh, not the number. Yeah, I think I still have them. I'll figure out some way to like get those out. They still exist on like the teching third channel or something. I don't know. But they, I did, I didn't delete any of them. It's just all of um, what's it called? Uh, YouTube, like not. I mean, it's not YouTube. It's the it's Toei. You know, blocking them. You know, Gyaru is the Japanese pronunciation of Gyaru. Really. Because I always thought Gyaru was a term that, like, because the idea in Japan, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong with any of this, but this was my understanding of that, like, like that fashion trend. So in Japan, from what, from my understanding, the traditional form of beauty is pale skin, women that are, like, thin, pale skin, and black hair. That's why Boa in One Piece is like, like Oda was like, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Very tall, has, you know, pale skin, like flawless skin and black hair, long black hair. That's the idea. So there was this counterculture thing that emerged. I don't know if it was in the 90s or the 80s. I think it was somewhere around there, late 80s, early 90s, maybe. Might have been earlier than that. I don't know. Um, don't know a lot about Japanese subculture, but then there was like the opposite of that, which was like, okay, tan skin, blonde hair, the like flip, like the opposite of that. So that kind of became, you know, that, that the uh, Gyaru thing. So I, I didn't know Gyaru was just gal. I didn't know it was taken from that. Okay. Interesting. Huh. You learn something new every day. I mean, somebody on the internet said it, so it's probably true, right? It's probably true. I mean, if you can't trust a guy on the internet, who can you trust? It's in the 90s from what I could find. Yeah, I, I think I've heard it equated to, like, the same time, like, the Valley Girl thing was going on. Like, the Beverly Hills 90210 Valley Girl archetype was kind of becoming a thing in the States. That's, like, at the same time. And, and maybe they might have had connections with one another. I don't know. Either way, I'm liking it so far. I'm liking the anime so far. So we'll see where this pans out. Kind of makes me want to visit Hokkaido, to be honest with you. 
Ho, Kaido. Can't go up there, though, because Kaido owns it. Onigashima is actually supposed to be Hokkaido, if you knew that. Like, Ho Onigashima is supposed to be the island of Hokkaido, except uh, in the original thing, like, the so Wano is up here and Onigashima is, like, below it. O Oda originally intended it to be over here to make it more like a one-to-one, -one, but um, it just didn't work for the context of the story, so he had to move it down here. And it's cold all the time. Yep. Yep. Ain't Onigashima Okinawa? No, it was it was supposed to be Hokkaido. I don't think there is a Wano equivalent for Okinawa. I brought this up to Ru uh, not Rustage. I brought this up to Artor once because I needed help making the Wano geography video, and because uh, I was trying to figure out what all the different like Tohoku is, uh, the Ringo region and all this shit. I was trying to figure out where everything fit in the map because Oda revealed it, but it was all written in Japanese. So I, I needed Artor to help me with that. And, um, yeah, I, I think he told me that, like, there's no parallel directly to Okinawa. Because Okinawa is way south of, like, Honshu. Yeah, Onigashima, it comes from, um, The Legend of Momotaro. It's The Legend of Momotaro, where he goes to the land of demons or Oni and defeats them. And that's the whole idea. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get this done today. I'll be able to maybe build another chunk of it, but yeah, I don't think we're getting done with this today. Did we get Hawaii? I mean, Egghead is kind of Hawaii. Oh, oh, like on here yet? Uh, no, not yet. Not quite yet. I'm from Okinawa. Ah, cool. I would love to visit Okinawa. I was introduced to Okinawa... Through Quentin Tarantino's magnum opus, Kill Bill, Volume 1. That's how I was introduced. I, I shouldn't say magnum opus. My favorite Quentin Tarantino movie is Pulp Fiction, like, hands down. That's probably my best, that's probably my favorite movie of all time. Like, if I had to, if I had to pick, like, if somebody held a gun to my head and was just like, what's your favorite movie of all time? I'd be like, I'm probably going to say Pulp Fiction. And whatever happens after that point is, I guess, on their taste. Uh, is there an island based on India? Uh, probably some architecture somewhere is based off India. Uh, India is the country that Jimbe would have been from. So Nami would have been from like Sweden. Luffy would have been from Brazil. And Jimbe would have been from India. All right, what am I... I need a thing. I'm a what's it? Oh, this, yeah. I thought that story was Sentomaru's backstory. Um, they're both references. Momonosuke and Sentomaru both kind of have Momotaro as their basis. Oda does, Oda reuses stories sometimes. He reuses myth and legend a lot. Because the uh, technique that Sentomaru uses, like, Ashigara Dokoi, that, that's the name of the mountain, I think, from that story. Oh, no. No, he's based... No, 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 no. There's some references to Momotaro. There's also references to Kintoki. There's also... There's, like... So Momotaro kind of has, like, a couple of different things going on with him. But Momotaro is, is mixed in there, too. Uh... Potential two-part donation. Besides the viewership thing, did you think did you stop making My Hero Academia videos because of the awful way the story is going since PLW? PLW. What's PLW? Uh, uh, I can't remember PLW. Something something war. Um, I was legitimately going to make a video, like make a review on the last chapter. I might on the new one. Is the new one up? Because it is a Friday. It wasn't up when I checked it this morning, but it might be up now. I, I don't spoil anything if it is. But, uh, oh, Paranormal Liberation War. Um, I was reviewing My Hero Academia when, like, the 
provisional license exam was going on. So that was way back in like 2016. Um, I would have preferred to review it during the Paranormal Liberation War because that was like more action. That was more like typical shonen. Um, so My Hero Academia... Oh, man. I, you know what? I read that weekly. And I read the comments of what people are saying about the chapters. And uh, from what I can gleam from at least what people were saying about that in that one particular comment thread... A lot of people complained about the uh, Todoroki fight and the Uraraka fight. Nobody really seemed to... I, mean, I shouldn't say nobody. It was like one particular comment thread. I don't want to make it seem like it was universally unpopular. But a lot of people were like, just hurry up and get to Izuku. Hurry up and get to All for One. Hurry up and get to, um, you know, uh, Shigaraki. We don't, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. Hurry, hurry up. And it's also like around that time that Horikoshi was like going through a lot of shit. Like, uh, he wasn't putting out chapters every week. He was skipping a lot of weeks, but there was, like, reasons for that. Some of those chapters were only, like, 12 pages, and I remember some people complaining about that. Like, we waited two weeks for only 12 pages? God damn it, this sucks! And I'm like, guys, chill. I mean, it's also intended to be read through the Tonkoban format. Like, like it's, it was broken up a lot weekly, but if you read the Tonkobons all the way through, I'm sure it would flow a lot better, you know? People have been way too negative on this arc. That is fair. I think that's fair. I, I think I've been seeing a lot of people hating on this, and I don't think it's warranted. Um, now, I do want to say something about the recent chapters, but this is like heavy spoilerish territory. So I kind of don't want to bring it up. Oh, I need another hook. I don't like, yeah, um, am, are we okay to talk about at least up to the Paranormal Liberation War? Because I'm probably going to end up talking, if we, if we talk about My Hero, I'm just going to probably end up talking about everything that's happened up until the, like, not the chapter that came out, like, today or tomorrow, but the chapter that happened last week. I, you know, if we just keep going like this, and I, I'm fine with doing that, I'm okay, it's just that a lot of people might not be cool with that, I think I added something wrong. Um, all right, now we get to the part where I'm missing a piece. And we got to find it. Found it. Yeah, anime only. Um, okay, if we're just talking about Paranormal Liberation War... Um, I feel like the way that Midnight died could have been handled a little bit better. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the heroes, let's be honest, a lot of the heroes that died in the Paranormal Liberation War, nobody cares. Like, Mystic, who cares Mystic died? Is like, was anybody's Mystic's favorite? That guy that just showed up is my favorite hero. It's like Mystic died. I was honestly a little upset when Crust died. When Crust died, the shield hero, I was actually a little bit, but even the way Crust died was kind of badass. He didn't just die off screen. He was just... And then he just disintegrates, and I'm like, all right, so that wasn't too bad. Um, I don't remember hating that much stuff about the Paranormal Liberation War, honestly. Um, Crust was a sad death, but he died like a boss, all right? Rest in peace, Master Driller! Damn you! Controversial judgment call, though. People might be mad about this. I'm not I'm not even sure how I feel about this particular turn of events in my hero. I could see it both ways, but if Dobby killed Endeavor in the Paranormal Liberation War, I could see that working. Like Horikoshi could have wrote that out where Todoroki eventually has to come back and avenge his dad, despite all the horrible abuse he suffered and shit like that. It could have worked. Now, with that being said, Endeavor surviving so Todoroki and himself can fight Dobby together, that works too. But you could have, I think you could have killed, you could have killed off Endeavor there. You could have done that, and I think he would have written it in a way that would have made it work.
Um... Very heavy indeed. I, I I think, yeah, I mean, Endeavor still might die. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. All right. Did we make all of them? I think we made all of them. Made two of these, two of these. All right. I think we're just building the next section. Okay, cool. All right. So. So the thing about... There, there's a lot of cliches in shonen manga. Like, in general. There's a lot of them. There's some that I'm okay with. There's some that are cliches that are cliches for a reason, because they're usually really good. Like, the scene in... I, once again, I... Okay, I'm just gonna talk about the most recent chapters. I'm sorry, because I just gotta bring that up. So if, you're, if you haven't caught up on the manga, maybe you should just dip out for, like, a couple minutes. But I, I want to talk about a scene in the chapter... So I, I got to bring that up here. Um, so just give you a second here. I'm going to put some of this together. All right. Oh, oh, it's the same one. Oh, okay. I'm literally just building it from that perspective. Okay, that would make it easier then. I'm out. Later. Come back in like five minutes. You should be good. We, we good? I'll mute. Okay. Um, r really quick. So in the last chapter when Aizawa showed up through the portal and it was that moment where Izuku's got both of his fucking arms blown off and he's like, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna die here. And then boom, Saro shows up. Boom, Ojiro shows up. Boom, Sato shows up. Like the three who gives a shit characters in class 1A show up to save Izuku. And then the fucking warp gate opens, and Aizawa steps through, and he's just like, Sorry we're late, Midoriya. Like, that's cliche as fuck, but that's so goddamn hype. You know, that's so good. So cliche, but that's good cliche. That's a trope for a reason. How fucking cool that is, you know? Okay, so, <laughs> wind it back. You're good. You're good. You can come on back in. You can come on back then. You can come back on in. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm done. I'm not going to say anything else about the recent chapter, right? But there's tropes that I like and there's tropes that I don't like. And of course, this is mainly, this is subjective. This is completely subjective. So when I look at a manga chapter and I'm like, man, they're doing this cliche shit again that I don't like. That's a me thing. That's not like a manga thing. That's a me thing, all right? Because some people might not mind the cliche. Some people might like the cliche, you know? So, I can't really say much more about that without spoiling a bunch of shit, so I'm not going to keep going. But, like, uh, yeah, that's the idea. But I'll tell you one thing. I've never read a manga and, like, gotten to the point where I feel, like, worse for having read it. Like, I, I've never... Sometimes I'll read things from people that feel genuinely upset that, like, I've wasted my time with this tripe. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I've, I've seen that before. I can never really honestly tell you I've had that. You know, despite the fact of, like, the way Bleach ended, I didn't sit there and be like, ah, it's just, oh, I was all for nothing, you know? And just like, no, I've, I've never had that serious of a reaction from an anime or a manga before. I, I've just never had it. Um... So, I can't really relate to that. Is it Lego? It is Lego. I'm building a Lego Stargate. Yes, I am. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's it's not, uh, not snowing. It's raining outside and windy and it's blowy. Yeah, everybody's saying the, the ending's going to be, like, endgame level. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to have to wait and see and give Horikoshi the uh, benefit of the doubt until we see it. I, I can't really say there's anything in My Hero right now that I'm, like, 
so upset by that I would warrant, like, I'm dropping this, you know what I mean? Like, I can't read this anymore. Like, I'm not at that point. There's no, I'm not even close to being at that point. Like, even Naruto, near the end, I was kind of done with, like, I, like, all passion had kind of waned out of me by the end of Naruto, and I still finished it and was like, alright, that's how it ended. Okay. Alright. Europe, and then Africa. Okay. Okay, I get it. And then this is going to slide right into here. Oh, that's what the claw part's for. Okay. Oh, this is this is South America. Okay, this is the part right here. Oh, clasped right into that. Nice. Look at that. We just built like Algeria and like Libya. There we go. I think that's more Libya. Cool. Naruto content incoming. You know, I made, um, I talked about that whole rant about Naruto's upbringing in the village and how it's, like, way overkill when it comes to, like, making your protagonist, like, we gotta give this protagonist a really, really, really sad backstory. He's lived on his own since he was five. His parents are dead, but no one tells him who his parents are, even though everybody knows. And, and he has a demon fox inside of him, and, and everybody hates him, you know? It's like, and I, I wrote down a whole thing. I have a whole note sheet downstairs for it, honestly. I don't think, I don't think Sakura gets as much, I, I, I don't think Sakura gets enough hate. I think more people should hate Sakura. No, I think Sakura gets too much hate. I, I think Sakura, I don't think it's warranted, really. It's like not every character in a shonen manga has to be a shonen battle badass, you know what I mean? I would I like there be more stuff with with Sakura, like more character development and stuff. I think there was a few moments there where it kind of like backed up her character in a in a in a way that's like okay, you you that's something that that's an idea, that's a trope in anime and fiction that I I don't like is when you have um characters at the end of an arc feel like they they have an arc and then they immediately backslide on it. You know, it's it's a thing where it's like, I have changed and I will be this kind of person from now on. And almost like the next arc, it like resets and it's like, yeah, we didn't learn anything. It's like, yeah, 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 that. That is something I fucking hate. I don't like that. It's not a trope, it's bad writing. I would say anything is a trope that occurs relatively, like, often in fiction is is a trope, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, for good or bad, you know? There, there, there's tropes that are really shitty. Um, there's tropes that are really good, you know? If, if, if there's something that shows up in a lot of fiction, they would probably have a name and be on trope, you know, uh, TV tropes. It would be called, like, The Backslide or something like that, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a topic of that somewhere on there. So it could be bad writing and a trope. It could be both. No, I knocked a thing off the thing. No! 10-10 ten, ten got less screen time than the swing. <laughs> that reminds me back in the old Naruto Abridge days. I think the log gets more screen time than 10-10. Ten, ten. Oh, old school of bridges were fun. With your little Karibos and whatnot. One foot tall brick wall. The one foot tall brick wall? Those days were all about memes. Those days were all about one-liners and whatever you could put on a shirt. Those were the days. It's, that's crazy to me to think that Naruto Abridged is almost 20 years old. Sorry to make you feel old, but I did. Naruto live action is coming. Yeah, I think I heard something about that. 
Which it's like at, th at this point, I'm just gonna acknowledge that like everything's gonna have a live action. Th I'm not even surprised anymore when something comes out with like live action Death Note, live action One Piece, live action Bleach. I'm not even surprised by it anymore. It's just like all right, live action Naruto. Let's see what they got. See if it's worth the time. What'd you guys think of the live action Avatar? Uh, I liked it okay. It, I, I still maintain that One Piece has the best one. But um, I thought it was okay. I could see it getting renewed for the season two. Europe, we building Europe! Okay, so this is like Eastern Europe. So we're probably over where like Bulgaria and um like we're, we're kind of getting into like belarus and stuff like that i think over on this side ang didn't goof around uh yeah i can tell you that uh that wasn't a criticism of my <laughs> that wasn't a criticism of mine i was like ang's not goofy enough it's garbage All right. Uh, it's slowly coming together. Wow, I didn't know the earth. This is what's inside the earth, guys. It's like a bunch of gears and stuff. Like some tires and stuff. The earth is 20% tire. The earth is a Dyson sphere. <laughs> The Earth, in all of its glory. My favorite One Piece character? Oh, my favorite One Piece D&D &D character, I was going to say. Um, let's see. Oh, there's so many. If we're not talking player characters, if we're just talking about NPCs. Um, I mean, Adam is really cool just because he was like the first major NPC we met. We pissed in his bed. That was a fun time. Um, I liked Rain's arc. Like, what, what, Rain, what uh, Rustage did with Rain's story and everything I thought was pretty good. Um, in One Piece D&D &D Marines, I'm warming up to Taiga. I'm warming up to Taiga's character. He is rather Taiga-tastic. He's Taiga-tastic after all. Oh, wait. Um, I think I flipped these around. I like the one cheese in wheel. Uh, yeah, I've read Unle Undead Unluck. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping up with it right now with the current arc and everything. But for the same reason, I'm not going to spoil... Uh, the same reason with my hero. I'm not going to spoil that. Oh, shit. This might be hard to get out. Ah, fuck. All right. Um... Isn't Tyga just male Cleo? No, no, don't compare Tyga to Cleo. Get out of here right now. All right, I'm using a box cutter to prop this off. If I slice my finger, I guess you'll be present for that. All right, there we go. Don't worry, guys. I know how to use a box cutter. There we go. I have a bunch of scars on my hands from all the times I cut myself working at Dollar Tree by accident. Oh, man. But I'm an expert now. All right. Now we have it. Okay. Just use your nails. Uh, not, not long enough. Not long enough. Just cut them recently. That was my first go-to. That was my first idea. What have I been cooking lately? Uh, my friends came down last week, and I made salmon for them. They really love that salmon that I cook. I found swordfish the other day in the grocery store. I didn't buy it, but I had, like, a mental note that, like, okay, they have swordfish, and I think I'm going to make that next. Never had it. Never made swordfish before.
My favorite fruits basket character, probably Kurino, the rooster, or the sparrow. I've always I've always liked him. I don't know. I think he's just kind of quirky. Okay. I think we're partially getting into like Russia now. Yeah, this is like Yeah, this is like Ukraine. All right. We're that percentage of the way done. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'm getting this done tonight. That's not happening. But you know, but you know. Oh man, are we already getting in see see the scale of this is all over. So this is like the Middle East and like Saudi Arabia and everything like that. And then over here already would be like, yeah, I guess that's India and Sri Lanka. I guess this has to be. Yeah. Okay, cool. Are we building North Sentinel Island? I've been subscribed since 2016. Oh, well, thank you, Brandy. Seeing the big three in live action format is going to be cool to see. Damn, Skippy. Brandy. Did I ever tell you about the time I took that shot of Brandy? So, I was at my grand... Not my grandmother. I was at my Aunt Susan's funeral at her viewing. Uh, me and my mom drove down to North Carolina. My, my Aunt Susan, my Uncle John's wife, was very ill. She had terminal skin cancer. We get down there... And she was really bad. Like, I, like we were going down there to see them, and I didn't think she was going to be that bad. Like, John had kind of told us, but, like, I, I was, here's what I was picturing. I was picturing we were going to drive down to North Carolina, and, like, she was going to be sick and, like, in her bed, like, drinking tea, because she loves drinking tea, my Aunt Susan. And, um, like, she was going to be really sickly, but, like, still being able to hold a conversation. And, like, that's the way I pictured it. We get there and it was like total, like she was in like palliative care. Like she was in like hospice care, like hospital bed in the living room. And she was just barely able, I mean, she was able to talk a little bit. And um, it was a good thing we went down there because the following morning she passed away. Like we got there, we were able to spend one night with her. We were able to talk to her and, uh, and then she passed away the following morning. So we were only going to stay like three days, but we obviously stayed longer because of everything. So we, we, we stayed for everything and the viewing was happening and we go through the viewing and everything and we're out in the lobby area of this church. It was a very nice church, Greek Orthodox Church in North Carolina. And they had like a, a table with like food on it. Like, and it was mostly like cookies, brownies, crackers, like that kind of stuff, you know, just like finger foods kind of stuff. And, and everybody comes out of the viewing, and, and I met a bunch of people there, all of Susan's friends and everything, and all the family members and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm there, and my mom's there, and my other aunt, my Aunt Allison, and my Uncle Dave are there. And I go over to the buffet table, to this little area, and I get a little plate of food. And at the end of the table, there are these little plastic shot glasses, like, like red Solo cups, but like small. And there was just drinks in them but the thing is they weren't labeled <laughs> they were not labeled and there was nobody like at the table like managing it or anything it, it was just a table that was set up you know there was nobody that was there to like oh that's that and that's that or whatever it's just a table and and i'm looking at it and i'm like okay i don't know what this is but, like, there's little kids, like, running around the church, you know? Like, there were kids there, and they're taking stuff off the table. So I'm like, well, this can't be alcohol, because there's, like, unattended, like, alcohol. Just, like, kids could just pick this up and just drink it. So I'm like, this is, this is probably, like, soda or apple juice or something, right? Like, yeah. So I go over to uh, my mom and my Aunt Allison, and they're talking, and they're in their nice clothing, and I'm wearing a nice thing, and... I'm there and I'm eating a cookie and I'm talking to them. And then I, I don't even like smell whatever it was. I should have done that or take a sip. I'm literally just eating a cookie and then just, just drank the whole thing. 
it was brandy. And <laughs> I don't drink alcohol really at all. So <laughs> that was a little stronger than what I'm normally accustomed to. So my first instinct was to spit it out, but my aunt and my mom are right in front of me wearing their nice dresses. I'm not going to spew brandy all over them. And I don't want to spit it all over the church floor. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be an adult. Like, like I remember like, it was like, like, it was like, like really quick in my brain. I just like took a shot at how old was I? This was recent. This was like three years ago. This wasn't that long ago. Um, so I take a shot of this brandy, but I've never had brandy before. I've never had really a shot of something that strong before ever. So I, I, I go through all the like things in my brain and I'm just like, Matt, you're a grown up. You're an adult. You got to drink it. You got to pound it back. You committed. Now you got to drink the whole thing. And I'm like, fine. And I just, yeah, <laughs> you know? Um, so after that, I felt fantastic. I, I gotta be honest with you. The rest of the night, I felt a little lighter. I felt like, oh, okay. This was, I felt like better after that, I guess. I, I needed it if nothing else. Cause it wasn't a great time because my aunt passed away, but, uh, that helped a bit, I guess. <laughs> oh my God. So that, that was that, that was that story. Probably the Mo the closest I've ever come to actually being drunk was was probably that story. Yeah, she, uh, my mom and me always kind of like, yeah, she waited for us to get there and say goodbye to her. So that was really nice. We got we got to say goodbye to my aunt Susan. Yeah, and we stayed for about a week and then we came back. It was right before I moved out too. I mean, it was like I was in the middle of like packing everything up while that was going on. It was just a mess. For a few months there, with just everything happening. Tipsy Teching. It's a great name for a series. Alright, yeah, I guess this is, um... Yeah, I guess, yeah, this is the Indian Ocean. So this is, like, like India right there? Well, wait, I don't know why I'm lifting it up. I have another camera. That was the whole reason I put the other camera here, so you could see it. So, like... Like, this is India right here, and this is Sri Lanka down here, this little dot. Okay. Neat. That's, that's part of the world we have so far. Yeah, I don't think I could have pulled off all the Rock Leaves uh, drunken fist moves. I don't think I could have done that. I don't think I was drunk enough to do that, and I also don't think I have the, uh, the, the, the muscular memory to do that. How much was this? Uh, this was the most expensive one I ever bought for this. Uh, this was like 200 bucks. If you want to buy it yourself. This was the most expensive Lego set I've ever bought. But hey, in terms of giving you stuff to do, it's, it's certainly, <laughs> it's certainly here. Okay. I guess... Japan is next. We're moving on to East Asia. We're moving on to China, Mongolia, Korea, and Japan. Russia, yep. They are especially expensive. Yeah, they are. They certainly are. I just built the Colosseum. I wanted to buy the Colosseum. So the Colosseum set is not in circulation anymore. It's not in production anymore. So you can buy it, but it's way more expensive than it would have been because I don't think you could just retail it anymore. Um, and I was looking at the dimensions of the Colosseum one, and I had a spot where I was going to put it. I have an empty shelf over there that I was like thinking about putting it there, and I think it's too big for that shelf. So honestly, I would fucking love to build the Colosseum, I do not think I have anywhere that I could comfortably put it that wouldn't be in the way, you know? Like, I could just slap it right down on my coffee table, but I use that, <laughs> you know? I could put it right here on my island. I'm snacking on the pieces. Yeah, I, I my diet is like, I'm on a new diet. 
It's 75% Lego pieces. <laughs> oh man, these aren't M&Ms. These were Legos. It's 20 inches in diameter. Uh, not just diameter, but like the total, like from both perspectives. And I think how tall it would, would also fucked me over in terms of that shelf. I just, I, I measured it when I looked at the dimensions and measured it and it just isn't going to work. Um, trail mix. Trail mix. I also have dried mangoes. Yeah. They gotta stop making these Lego pieces taste so damn good. That's what I've been saying. What about on top of the fridge? Um, that's not gonna work. See? Top of my fridge is just more cabinets, which is really annoying because I can't even reach those cabinets. <laughs> I'm too tiny. Dude, when I moved in here, that cabinet, the cabinets above that fridge, the guy that lived here before me had a bunch of guns and he kept like a bunch of his pistols in there. And uh, when I was cleaning up the house, like uh, this was like a year after I moved in, like I, I had been here for a while. I found a, a, a magazine. I found a loaded magazine for like a Glock, like up there, like under the cabinet between the fridge and the cabinet. So that was their housewarming gift they gave me. <laughs> Just grow. You met the previous owner? Yeah, when we, when I bought the house and signed everything over, yeah, I met him. Him and his wife. I think they got divorced, actually, though. But whatever. I got a house out of it, so. I think there was some drama going on there, but I didn't really, like, you know what? I just, I'm just trying to buy a house, you know? I don't know what's going on in your love life, but I'm, I'm buying a house. <laughs> I thought you were renting an apartment. Oh, no. I got a house. It's mine. Well, I'm still making payments, and so it's technically more the banks than mine, but making payments. Hmm. Divorce is such a weird cultural shift for me. Like, what do you mean cultural shift? Like, you don't have divorce in the country you're in? Like, what do you mean? Or is divorce, like, different there? All right. Bag number what? Nine? Yeah, nine. Nah, let's see here. Um... Yep. Adulting Tekken. Congrats on the house. Thank you. Can you believe I've been here two and a half years already? That does not feel right. You know? It'll be three years in October. Uh, yeah. R rural homes are, yeah, if, they, if I lived in like a suburb of LA, this would probably be way more expensive. Not probably. It would be way more expensive. Alright. Um. I still remember that dented old bed you had. Yeah, me too. Me too, buddy. I remember it well. That was not a comfortable bed to sleep on. Now I have a nice pillow-topped mattress. Oh, it's lovely. I love my bed. Do you ever just sit on your bed and are just like, I love you, bed. You always understand. You're always there for me, bed. <laughs> uh, nine is upside down. Well, I already used pack six, so... I hope it wasn't upside down. 
Uh, my rent is thirteen fifty for two bedrooms, no washer or dryer in Virginia. Yeah, you probably live in what, like an actual, like Richmond or something? Roanoke? Yeah, any city or state it would be. If I lived even close to a major U.S. city, the, the, it, this, this place would be whoo, through the fucking roof. If I lived within 30 minutes of Pittsburgh, which is the nearest big city from where I'm at, uh, this would be way, it might be double this, I mean, what I paid for it. I mean, it would be absurd. Beds don't judge. They just support us and help us dream. <laughs> Gotta keep your feng shui up. Dude, I have one plant over here, and this son of a bitch has been alive for like two years. I've been keeping this thing alive, all right? Shit. <laughs> Check out my plant, <laughs> okay? He's alive, he's thriving, and I forget to water this thing all the damn time. There you go, plant. Ugh. Okay. Back to this. Yay. All right. All right, grab that. Doop, doop, do, doop, do, doop, doop, do, doop, do. Yeah, a lot of this is just going to be the same shit over and over again, isn't it? Isn't it going to be just the same crap over and over again? Build this. But I just want to get Japan done tonight. I think I think after this bag, we're going to call it. Because there's no point. Like, I thought I might have a solid chance of finishing this tonight, but there's just no, there's no fucking way. I'm not even, I'm, I'm a quarter of the way done with the Northern Hemisphere. I still have three more sections of the Northern Hemisphere, and then I have a whole Southern Hemisphere to do. <laughs> there's no way I'm getting this done tonight. But I can get Japan done. I will at least make Japan. We will have Japan, and that'll be that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when Liam analyzed my YouTube channel. I remember that video. That was a fun video. He said some nice things about my channel. I like that. There was another one called, uh, I think the Pirate Diaries did a really good analysis of my channel, too. Go check that one out, too. He also did a really good job. Makes me feel old to a certain extent because I've been on the platform for so damn long. But like, you know, this will be 15 years I've been on YouTube, guys. 15 yards. Started in 2009. Is this the current model of the globe? Uh, yeah. I, at least I hope so. I guess it won't be in a few million years or whatever, but for right now it is. I would have thought you introduced Murphy to Daniel. Uh, no, I did not. Murphy and Daniel knew each other by the time I came along. I have really shitty memory on how I met people online. You know, like, I don't remember how I first met Murphy. I remember being in a live stream with her, like... Somebody invited me on. It wasn't Daniel. I, I didn't know Daniel yet. I met Murphy first, and then I met Daniel. At least I think. I think that's how it worked. Because I think I knew Murphy before Isekai D&D. Did I? Dude, I can't even remember anymore. That's what happens when you get old. You start losing your memory. You start losing your marbles. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. I was on the, I was on the live stream with Jay. Jay Murphy and me, but that was like recent. We did that like within the last like year. We did that. I knew Murphy before that. That was really fun though. We need to do that again. I need to message Jay and everybody. And we just like we need to go get together and do that podcast kind of thing again because that was really fucking fun. And my internet that was back when my internet sucked, and like I kept cutting out that night. And it would be really nice to do that again, except with better internet. I dropped a piece. Uh, there it is. We're not old yet, Taggy. 
You're the only old one. Old. You're old. You've got multiple chins cause you're old. You're old. Checking podcast would be awesome. Well, I'm doing a lot of podcast-esque things. Wait, wrong one. Doing a bunch of D&Ds right now. I'm really pumped for Briggs's campaign. It's really fun so far. I think it's because, like, I love One Piece D&D and Isekai D&D. But just playing generic, just ordinary D&D, haven't done that in a while, you know? Like, my friends will do these, like, wacky one-offs every now and then. Those were really fun. We did one of those last week. We did a Pokemon D&D, which was really good. I'm doing my campaign, but that's more of, like, my own homebrew. Um, and then Isekai D&D &D and One Piece D&D. &D. So it's, it's honestly just kind of nice to just play, like, D&D. &D. Just, here's 5e D&D. &D. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. So that, that's kind of fun. Are your neighbors nice? Yeah, my neighbors are great. My one neighbor's over here. They they invited me over to play a, a... Ever hear of a card game called... Uh, I think it's a card game. Card game called Dominion. Because they were like... They really love playing Dominion. They're like, you would probably love it, Matt. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I think I'm going to play that with them at some point coming up here. Uh, my other neighbor is actually from London originally. And I was talking to him the other day about me going there, and he was giving me a bunch of recommendations. Him and his wife were telling me about places to go, and, like, you got to see the Tower of London, and where are you staying, and all that stuff. And my neighbors are great. My neighbors are cool. Yeah, I played Dominion. Is it good? I haven't looked it up yet, the actual rules or anything. I should probably do that at some point. Uh, no, wrong side. There we go. Wait. Ah, shit. Hold on. Ah! Alright. Hold up. Ah, no! No! Wait, I got it. It's a fun deck building game. Oh, cool. I like fun. I like fun. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to. Oh, I was like confused for a moment. Okay. How the fuck did this happen? All right, all right, all right. This part is separate. Keep that over there for right now. This part came undone. Okay, no. Okay, okay I got it, I got it. The cards let you draw extra cards. Nice, nice. I think Schwabity and Rustage talked about it. Yeah, if they like, uh, I love card games. I like like the Unicorn game, and uh, Star Girl got me into that. And then there was the uh, Super Fight. Rustage got me into that. So I'm loving, I'm loving the card games. Okay. Okay, here we go. He'll need a bigger Earth. I should probably turn it to the direction that's actually kind of finished. Unstable Unicorns? Yeah, the Unstable Unicorns game. Last week was my honeymoon, so I didn't get to watch your videos. Congratulations, Haven. Congrats. You have my blessings. You have been granted the blessings of teching. T, go in peace. <laughs> go in peace and be one peace be with you.
I have no friends that follow YouTube creators I follow. Um, I very rarely have conversations with my friends about YouTube channels that like I watch. It doesn't come up super often. Can you do your Pika impression? I don't know, really. I guess I could try, but it's, you know, it's a thing that's kind of a thing. Hey, everybody, I'm Pika. Dofi's going to be king of the pirates, and I'm going to help. Sorrow, you fool. There you go. You have friends with an S? I don't know what that feels like. Oh, my God, that's sad. I'm sorry, dude. You have friends. Everybody has friends. And if not, you could always watch Friends, the show. So there's, there's that. I actually never really got into Friends. Not really. Oh, it's really raining now. I can hear it. All right, we made one of these. Now we have to do this again, and then we have to make two more, and then I'm going to put all the islands and continents and countries and everything on there, and then and then we're going to have a... Uh... Yeah, and then we'll have a thing. If nothing else, you know what? It's it's repetitive. It's, it's very... Um... The same thing, because it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the exact same steps for every single thing moving forward. Every bag is going to be the same steps. It's just going to be make two of these, make two of those, one, two, three, four, put the islands, put the, put the countries and everything on them, shift, do the same thing, shift, do the same thing, flip it upside down, do the same thing. And there's probably going to be some extra stuff on how to add it to this, how to connect it to this. But other than that, it's going to be the same thing, which is nice in a way. Because I can kind of autopilot this and I can kind of just build it while talking. And I haven't, like, I haven't fucked anything up in such a way that it's like, oh, no, I have to go back, like, 17 steps. You know, I, I haven't done that. Is this meditative? It's a little bit meditative. It's a little bit. It's a little bit meditative. Put me to sleep, daddy. Welcome back to Teching 101 Radio. Tonight, we're going to be building the planet Earth. The planet Earth, of course, came into being approximately 4.5 billion years ago. And it was a molten rock of magma for a very, very long time. And then after that cooled down, you got some nice water in there, and various amino acids and stuff started to form in that bubbling water and uh, lightning flashes and heat and all that nonsense. And, oh, after a few million years of sloshing around, some single cellular organisms began to pop up, and then... Um, you know, given another few billion years, and uh, here we are, and that's that's the Earth, and then eventually the sun's going to expand and fucking blow it all up, and um, that's pretty much where we're at right now. So welcome back to Teching One Hundred One Radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, let's get back to it. I guess build another one. Huh? You load sixteen tons of water, you get just build the same thing over again. All right. Damn, that's hot. You know what I'm really into right now? Um, there's a classical station uh, that my radio kind of auto, like my my radio in my car. Like if I like, I usually just listen to my playlist on my phone, like Bluetooth. But when I turn on my car, it's on a radio, and it just locks on to the nearest radio station. And I think it's eight, eighty nine point one or eighty nine point seven or something. It's like a classic radio station based in Pittsburgh. So it's usually like. Welcome back to KDKA Pittsburgh. Today we're going to be listening to Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Symphony. And I'm listening to a lot of, like, classical music, and it's actually pretty badass, dude. And the announcers for those classical music stations are so chill. They're so soothing. They're so nice. Love it. Has Japan been built yet? I'm working on it! I'm building the crust of the earth with my own two hands. 
I'm building the ocean, for God's sakes. We're not... I'm not Izanami and Izanagi. I'm not in Japan yet. Hold on. We'll get there someday. Nah, it's fine. Disney's Fantasia is really good. Oh, yeah, Fantasia. I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah. I'll let you know when we get to Japan. When we get to Japan, I'll let you know. All right. We are building Japan tonight. That's good. I could have, yeah. Where are you at? Um, the next, I mean, technically speaking, this is like the crust. I'm building the fucking mantle right now, technically. On this model, the Earth doesn't really have an outer core. The inner core is a bunch of gears in this model. Um, but I'm building the crust, I guess. And then, and then this is the ocean. And then um, after that's done, uh, China. China's next. China, and then like southeastern Asia, and and then and then we'll slowly get there. Yeah, I would like stuff crust. So the Earth is hollow, kind of, kind of. It's the the Earth is this. The Earth has like this geometrical like positioning piston system with like a tire in it. You know, this little tire thing right here. Yeah, that, that that's what's inside the Earth. I I don't know what geologists are smoking, but this is what's inside the Earth. Okay. Yeah. Earth is just one big dome. You could just, like, fall into the Earth. Yeah. Dude, I remember when my mom first told me about hell. And the way I was picturing it, like, was, like, hell was, like, literally... Because my mom explained it to me, like, as, like, a place on the Earth. Like, my mom explained to me hell was, like, a place in the center of the Earth where just every sinner is burning forever. And that terrified the shit out of me as a kid. Because I was, like, crying. And she's like, oh, don't worry, honey. You're not going to go there. And I'm like, oh, and so it still exists? That doesn't give me a lot of re... <laughs> doesn't make me feel happy about that. Oh, man. But, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> Holy shit. Sweet dreams. Yeah. Geography is everything. Yeah, I mean, in Dante's Inferno, it goes straight through. Because they believed there was a... They didn't know what was on the other side of the Earth. They thought it was like a super ocean. So in Dante's Inferno, it's like a super ocean. You, you go all the way through hell. You go through the center of the Earth. You climb up the other side. Because even in Dante's time, they knew the Earth was round. Like, it was well... It was known for, like, a thousand years by the time Dante showed up in, like, the 12th century that the Earth was fucking round. Um, so, you go up through the bottom. So, like, the idea is, like, you go through it, and on the opposite end, there's, like, a mountain, Mount Purgatory, and then you ascend Mount Purgatory, and then heaven is literally space. Like, the moon and the sun and the planets are all heaven. The celestial spheres. Yeah. That's how it was in... Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno. That would be a cool name for a barbecue grill. Come on down to Dante's Inferno. If I ever open a barbecue restaurant, I'm calling it Dante's Inferno. I, I don't know if my life's ever going to go that direction, but if it ever does, that's, that's what I'm going to do for it. Yeah, it was Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes is the man. He's the geography. He's the father of geography. He's the one that calculated the circumference of the Earth. It was like 200 BC. And he had this whole experiment that he did from Egypt, from Alexandria to this other place in Africa that had a well. And during the summer solstice, the sun shined directly down the well, like straight down. So he ran an experiment where he measured that distance and he calculated the circumference of the Earth. And he was... He was using an old form of measurement that's not used anymore. He was using stadia, I think. And it's a little bit debated what stadia converts out to, like with meters or feet or miles or anything. But from most estimates, and he didn't come up with a straight number. He didn't come up with like, it's exactly this. No, he was like, the Earth's circumference is somewhere between 24 to 27,000 uh, miles. If you convert stadia to miles, it was something like that. And that's right. That's correct. It's 25 something. It's almost 25,000 miles. It's like 24,900 something miles is, is the Earth's circumference. So he was in the, he got it. it. This was like 200 BC. This motherfucker got this. All right. So by the time Columbus was around, people knew the Earth was round. 
Like, definitively. Ma okay, maybe if you were a farmer and you were just didn't care about anything like that and you were just tilling the fields all day... And, and, you know, a lot of people couldn't read back then. If you were just like that, maybe you maybe you wouldn't even have an opinion on it or whatever. But mo anybody that was a scholar during that time period knew the Earth was round. If you were a sailor, you knew the Earth was round. If you knew anything about navigation, you knew the Earth was round. <laughs> Bros just summed up 600 pages like that. Yep, there you go. Teching 101 gives brief history. Anything else you want to know about brief history? We can just we can just do history as quick as possible. The most complicated things in history summarized in like less than a minute. Let's just do it. Remember drunk history? I love drunk history. I did not watch Pokemon Horizons, no. Who needs history class when you got teching? See, here's the problem with me teaching history, though. You noticed how I just said the F word, like, a bunch of times while doing that? I would get really excited teaching history and be like, here's how the fucking Romans took over the world! And I'd be like, okay, you can't be saying that. That's like, you know, I was like, I'll teach this class. All right, you need to go. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I would get excited and I would end up getting, you know, my, my cursing would take over and I don't think that would work out too well. <laughs> You'd be fine in university. I'm pretty sure none of my professors were swearing that much in university. <laughs> nah. I'm good doing this. I'm happy being a YouTuber. YouTuber. I got in, I got in trouble for answering a question like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never answered a question like that, but sometimes I want to. In conclusion, this was how it fucking happened. <laughs> All right. Oh, you know what I've been getting into big time in the last couple of weeks? Murder drones. Oh, man. I'm on episode... I just finished episode three. Oh, man. Glitch. Because they did, you know, uh, Amazing Digital Circus. And I've seen uh, murder drones. And I kind of, like, watched a little bit of it. And I was like, all right, I have to go back to episode one and get into this. But I just started it, like, recently. And it's like, damn, this is good. The soundtrack in this is incredible. Murder drones. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, let's win this. Blah, 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 Is this the real Earth or the One Piece Earth? Real Earth. I don't think the One Piece Earth has a Europe. I was a fan of Glitch before Digital Circus. Okay. Good, good for you. Oh, I don't care about... Yeah, my class would just call me Matt. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I'm not a mister. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't hate me. No, no, no. I don't hate you. You're fine. Oh, no! Yeah, it's definitely a good idea I brought the chair up here. There's no way... Like, I did this with the Pyramid Stream. Not the Pyramid Stream. I did this with the... Uh, was it the Pyramid Stream? Pyramid Stream was almost a year ago already. Wow. But either way, I'm glad I brought the, tr uh, the chair up here because, oh my god, it was not comfortable. I would be in so much pain right now if this was not the case. I, I like my dining room chairs, but they're not exactly um, super comfortable for long term. Should Carrot eat the snow or... Uh, oh yeah, the snow fruit... So, yeah, I mean, like, it would be cool if that's ever brought up again. I mean, it still could be, but, eh, probably not. I'm gonna do this again. I always forget this part. I have to wedge this little thing through. Build the Mary. We've built the Mary. We've built, um, the pyramid. Uh, I gotta be honest with you guys. Uh, I gotta come clean. I built a Lego uh, Hema G castle without you guys. It, it's over there next to the pyramid. <laughs> I built a Lego construct without you guys. I'm I'm so sorry. <gasps> Teching, how dare you? Teching, how dare? How dare you do that to us?
The Betrayer. Betrayal! Remember Spoonie? I remember Spoonie. Betrayal! Betrayed me! That's Spoonie Bard, oh yeah. Okay. Alright. Got two of those. I'll show you it. I'll show you the other thing I built. Alright. Himaji Castle. White Heron Castle. Do you listen to Chief Keith? No, I don't know what that is. Thanks all, have a good time. See ya, everybody. It too teching. It too teching. All right, we have two of these. Now we gotta do two other ones that are different for some reason. Ugh. <sighs> I built a Lego thing without you. I'm sorry, guys. I could see my house from here. Cool. <laughs> right now, this is the only part of the Earth that exists. It's one quarter of the Northern Hemisphere. This is it. Which is actually nice, because this is kind of where civilization started. Like, this is the Fertile Crescent, like, right here. Like, it's in modern-day Iraq where uh, the Tigris and Euphrates and so Mesopotamia, so Sumer started popping up. Egypt obviously is here. Like this is where the Levant, like this is where everything kind of started, you know? I, I, I kind of hope they were doing that on purpose because then we're kind of going around here and then obviously the Southern Hemisphere was inhabited later. Um, well, at least like obviously there were Homo sapiens in Southern Africa. What I'm saying is like Australia and like Southern tip of South Africa. I'm not South Africa, South America happened later. Yeah. So the Indus River Valley civilization is, I know Sumer, and it's hard to get, see, here's the thing with history. It's hard to find exact numbers for this. It's hard to say that like 4,122 BC, that's when the Sumerian civilization began. It's the best you could do is like, I've been seeing numbers around 4,000, 4,000 BC. Egypt was around, but it wasn't the dynasties yet. That didn't happen until the, the, the two lands were united in 3150, as far as we can tell, or around 3150, because we don't have an exact date. Um, but they were lands that existed before that. It was civilization before that. It was the Nequata culture. There was the Badarian culture before that, and the Neolithic. Um, and it's hard to exactly pin down exactly, like, when it became a like when does a settlement become a civilization exactly and civilization is like a definition that we give is like when like anthropologists define like what a civilization is right yeah eight thousand years ago is the most ancient piece of civilization well eight thousand years ago well, i know eight thousand bc so ten thousand years ago is right around when like there was definitely like okay hold on a second mm. so here's the deal when you say civilization, there's a strict criteria for... Well, I don't even know if it's that strict, because sometimes I see five things make a civilization. Sometimes I see six or seven different criteria. But there's like, uh, does it have a centralized government? Is there like an economy? Is, are they making art? Because that's another requirement. So like Nordachico was a civilization that existed in South America, like at the same time the pyramids were being built, Okay. But we haven't found any pottery from that site. So they didn't have any pottery, and they might not have had written words. They might not have had, a, like, a, like, a written language. But they built, like, this giant fucking city. So it's like, this is a civilization. Like, even if it doesn't meet that criteria, this is still, like, advanced shit going on down here. You know what I mean? So, like, 
even if like 10,000 years ago, this is when humans started figuring, think about how long human beings were walking around the earth. Homo sapiens have been around for around 200 to 300,000 years ago. We started to pop in. And it wasn't until 10,000 years ago that we finally started to settle the fuck down and started to actually uh, plant stuff and like stop the hunter-gatherer lifestyle and move to like sedentary agriculture kind of lifestyle, right? Um, you know, and I, I hate the term when people use like, you know, simple hunter-gatherers because you're probably just thinking of like dumbass cavemen, like, oh, hit things with club. You know, you could be a hunter-gatherer and be pretty goddamn advanced for your fucking time, you know? Yeah. Ooga booga, we make nice city! You know, like, ugg build, ugg build centralized government! <laughs> you know, it's like, no! It, it wasn't like dumbass cavemen and then civilization. It, it There was a gradient here! It took a long time! Ugh. Oh, man. See, the, the criteria for civilization is monument, society, trade with other cities. I've seen so many other different criteria of that, though. Like, so many different kinds. Sometimes I've seen three or four. Sometimes I've seen as many as eight or nine different criteria. Sometimes over ten different criteria of what considers a civilization. Yeah. Me want meat. Me, me build Walmart. I want nice pharmacy. I build Rite Aid. You know? Thag abuse power over citizens for personal wealth. Oh, man, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't just simple, dumbass hunter-gatherers picking their nose, like, I don't know what to do. And then, boom, like, ancient Samaria, like, the, the fucking ziggurat at Ur was built. It's like, no, it, was, it took a long time to get to that. Uh See, I get very heated up when I talk about history. I get very excited. Yeah, I, I get way too excited when I talk about this stuff. Gotta calm down. Gotta build some Legos. Just focus on the Legos, Tekken. Just focus on the Legos. Focus on just, I don't know. Who's your favorite Bob's Burgers character? I don't know why that popped into my head. I don't even watch Bob's Burgers. My friend Casey loves it. I never really got into it. I like H. John Benjamin. I love his voice. But I just never got into Bob's Burgers for whatever reason. Substitute history and geography teacher teching. <laughs> oh, dude. Alright. Tina. Yeah. Uh, One Piece Island location you want to build as a Lego set. I would love to build Drum Island. Drum Island would be fun. Last American history thing I searched. Okay. I gotta think about that one. Last American history thing I searched. Hmm... Because there was an eclipse this past week. Oh, by the way, did you guys see that? I researched the Battle of the Eclipse. But that, that wasn't America. That was like in 500 BC. So I remember that was probably the last history thing I've researched. Because I was reading about that like yesterday. Oh, you, you know what it was? I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, this, this isn't like, this wasn't like me reading it in a book. But O.J. Simpson died yesterday. That's not the part of America. Part of American history, O.J. Simpson trial. But um, because O.J. Simpson was in Roots, which is a miniseries that aired in the 70s all about a, a slave family that from the time they were taken in the 1750s from Western Africa in the transatlantic slave trade into America, it follows their whole family. So I was reading about that. I mean, I was reading about Roots, which got me into researching more about like the transatlantic slave trade and stuff. And I've already known quite a bit about it. But, like, just reading more about that last night was probably um, the last thing I researched. Yeah. He died on Wednesday, technically, yeah. He did die on Wednesday. Um, I talked to my mom a little bit about it. So I was, like, one 
when the trial happens, so I obviously have no recollection whatsoever. But uh, we talked we talked about that today. Yeah, he had lung cancer. Was it lung? Yeah, it was lung cancer, right? Yeah, it was lung cancer. Oh wait, did I mess this up? Uh, yeah, but not too bad. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is annoying. To get it like right at the right angle. Right at the right angle. What is your shirt? Androids! Oh, it was prostate cancer. It was some type of cancer. I know that much. I didn't know what type of cancer it was. Okay. There we are. Peak content right here. Oh, yeah. This is peak content. Me building. You should you should hide something in the earth before completing it. That's not a bad idea. What, what should I put in the earth? Yeah, I thought about getting a pet every now and then. It's a commitment, so I don't make it lightly. Barry. I don't think Barry's going to fit in here. Barry is way too big. Barry is way too big and way too heavy to fit in there. One of Barry's wings is falling off. I don't know if you can see that back there. <laughs> Barry, no! Barry! On a wing and a prayer. Where are we at? Two hours and 17 minutes. Holy shit. Well, at the rate I'm going, I'll tell you what, I was planning on stopping around midnight, and at the rate I'm going, it'll probably be around midnight, yeah. So that, that worked out. I just have to build one more of these, and then there's the easy part. Then I just have to add in all the countries and stuff, and then I think we're done for tonight. I've built uh, one quarter of the earth because this is one eighth of the earth and so that'll be i know fractions so this will be half of we built half of the northern hemisphere it's fine the other half's just america and canada and some ocean we we could get by with just europe and asia and and northern africa <laughs> there, there we go and indonesia we also have indonesia in there too and, and part of south america over here part of south america not all of South America. We got some Brazil and some Peru and parts of Chile over here, and that's it. You know, me and Casey, uh, I, I was talking to her the other day, and um, we, she was like, maybe we should get, I should get a snake. And I thought about getting a snake, too. Should I get a snake? I wonder. If I had a snack, what would I call the snack? All right, one more of these. Let's get to it. Come to Brazil. I do want to go to Brazil. I want to go to a lot of different places. I wish I could just teleport. I wish I could just teleport. I, I was talking to my mom today, and one of the other things that we brought up is, like, me traveling everywhere and stuff, and she's like, oh, man, why can't you just teleport? Why don't they have teleportation yet? And I don't know if my mom was joking or if she was actually asking me, like, why don't we have teleportation technology yet? And I told her the whole Star Trek trans mat thing where it's like the, the you die and then a new you is born. Like, I, like that whole concept, I, had, I told her that today. And she's like, oh, that's scary. And I'm like, yeah, right? Makes you think. <laughs> Makes you think. As long as you get to Norway. I want to go to Norway, too. Reptiles are also stinky. 
I mean, every animal, I think, is kind of... It's, every animal poops, so... Mo most animal poops, okay? So, like, don't have an animal at all if you don't want anything to stink, because, you know... It's, it's an animal. It's going to defecate at some point. You know what is the first sound ever recorded? Is it the... Um, I don't know. I think it was in Mesoamerica or Mayan civilization, something like that. It might have also been in Sumer. It was an early civilization. So they would be making pottery back in the day, right? And... Um, the way that this pottery was made or spun, anthropologists are looking at this pottery and, and, the, and the way that it was made. And you're looking at it and you're like, well, the way that this was done is the same way that a record is made. It, it's, it's the same way because you, like, you capture the vibrations and it etches it into the record. It's the same kind of concept. So they're like... We could play this back and it should have some of the sound vibrations for when that was like going on. And they did it and it fucking worked. All right. And you could hear like kids playing in the background and like people. I mean, it's super bad quality, but you could like hear it and kind of shit. Right. Isn't that fucking cool? Science, bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's like Jesse from Breaking Bad. Science! <laughs> Magnets, yo! <laughs> I love that episode. Earth rule! <laughs> so OJ died. Crazy, right? I mean, well, he had to die at some point. Now it happened. No, that's not right. There we go. Uh, wait. Oh, I skipped a step. Yeah. I skipped a step, kind of, but it's okay. It's not, like, a huge deal. I mean, I have, I have to, I still have to do it. I'm not going to get away with not doing it, but it's not, like, ruins anything. I just have to do it in a different order. All right. Um. Oh, wait. No, wait, no. No, yeah, I, I skipped that step. Yeah, I skipped this right here. That's fine. Okay. Did I drop... Oh, there's one of them. Do you think you can make a video on the recent anime episode? Uh, yeah, I could do that. I have to do that Dalton video, but I, I make other stuff in between. It doesn't have to be, like, just have to do the Dalton video next. Yeah, we're good. Uh, do I think OJ did it? Yeah, OJ did it. It's, I think it was pretty definitive that OJ did it. Then again, I wasn't there at the time, and I haven't read up a lot about the trial, but from what I have looked at, uh, it seemed pretty, pretty obvious there. I do also, I find it crazy that um, when he got out, like a few years later, I think, think this was during my time, like, when I remember this, I remember he wrote a book that was basically like, okay, I didn't kill my wife, but if I did do it, this is how I would have done it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So we do this, and now we add this. Okay. All right. If I did do it, this is how it would go. And, and he also, as I think he said, he's like, oh, once I get out of prison, I'm going to find the real killer. And I'm like, okay. Okay, OJ. Yeah, 
my mom told me like that was it was just a huge it was the trial of the century like it was a huge huge thing I killed her on Minecraft. It's just like, ah, uh, yeah, it's that kind of thing. That would, yeah, I've heard people talk about that. Like, that would be a good reality show. Every week, OJ's out there trying to find the next killer. I've heard people make that joke before. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, it's insane with all the crazy fucking reality shows that existed in the 2000s that that wasn't one. I'm just saying, that would have been... Probably very, I, I guess there was a line drawn somewhere, but yeah. OJ and Scooby-Doo, oh my god. Uh, what what emoji is that? Is that a gummy worm emoji? Are there gummy worm emojis now? Man. Favorite South Park episode? Uh, Make Love Not Warcraft, obviously. It's the best one. It is definitively the best South Park episode. There's nothing better. Yeah. All right. We built all of these, and now we get to assemble the Earth. We built the ocean. Now we can build stuff on top of it. All right. Eastern Asia being built. Assemble. These ones. Okay. Starting with these ones. All right. Mom! Bathroom! Bathroom, Mom! <laughs> oh, man. And then they had the sword. Randy. Randy's just... That, that episode was... That was the episode that got me into fucking South Park. I had a tradition that I did for a lot of years. So, my mom never wanted me to watch South Park growing up when I was a little kid. When I was, like, in the 90s. Because, like, it's really bad. Like, it was, like, super bad. Like, everybody was talking about it. Like, it was all on, like, the news and everything. Like, don't let your kids watch South Park. It's bad. It'll turn them into degenerates. It's worse than The Simpsons. It's horrible. So my mom is like, I never want you watching South Park. I'm like, okay. So I get a little older, and this is at the point my parents are divorced. I'm like 15, 16 years old. I'm a high school student. And my mom still doesn't like me watching it. Like, you know, but here's the thing. My mom, I remember for New Year's Eve, for a few years, she would go and uh, stay at her boyfriend's house for a few days, like for the, for the New Year's and whatever. And I would be home by myself, and I loved it because I was like a teenage kid, you know, I was a high school student, I was here, like home by myself and stuff. And I never had a crazy party or anything because I lived out in the middle of nowhere, but it was nice just to have the place to myself, you know, like the responsibility of that. So I had a tradition for many years Comedy Central would do a South Park marathon on New Year's Eve, and probably for like a good four or five years in a row, I, uh, I watched, you know, South Park, like, camped out on the couch all night watching South Park on New Year's Eve. That was, that was a good memory. This man has no life. I do not. That's why I'm a YouTuber. I have no life. Your, my life is your life. <laughs> that is what we are. That is what YouTubers are. Teching has integrity. All right. That Tegarty Farms. Yep, now that's how it looks. Okay. Oh, I think it goes down a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Look at it. Look at it. All right. He's got Tegarty. I haven't watched any of the newer episodes of South Park, though, to be fair. It could have gone to shit, and I would not know. I will say this about South Park. It, it, it's really good at adapting, because the Simpsons have been... The, the Simpsons are beating a dead horse at this point. You know what I mean? The Simpsons... It's, I mean, it's still making money. I'm not going to sit here and be like, why are the Simpsons still on the air? Well, clearly, the, the brand... I think it's more important the brand exists, because it's making money. And also, these are all cultural, cyclical things... Like, The Simpsons is not really that big in the U.S. anymore, but there might be some other country where The Simpsons are banging right now and people are loving The Simpsons. There was, um, this is a little old, but I know back in, like, 2015, 2016, Pokemon was really big in India. Like, India was having, like, like how Pokemania was in the 90s for us in, in America. It was, India was having their Pokemania, like, like, you know, eight years ago or whatever. 
So this is all cyclical kind of stuff, you know, uh, but The Simpsons is clearly still making money, but the overall formula of the show hasn't changed. And the same thing with Family Guy and, and American Dad, but um, South Park will at least adapt. And I think that's partly because Trey and Matt, like, don't seem to really give a shit sometimes. Like, Trey and Matt are like, yeah, fuck it, let's just do something different. And I think they have to rein it in sometimes because there's some shit they just can't do. But they take risks with things, and, and I'm sure, like, there's certain things. Like, we, we want to do this with the show, and the network is like, we're not allowing you to do that. You can't do that. But they get, they, they're, they're more okay with doing it. And uh, when they do, it's, it doesn't always hit, but at least they're trying to do something different so the show doesn't get stale as shit. So I got to check out the newer episodes. Oh, yeah, that's right. The new King of the Hill. Yeah, but Dale's voice actor died, and I think he did a few episodes for it, but eh, it's not going to be the same after he's gone. Then again, if you ever saw early Dale's voice or heard early Dale Gribble's voice in Game... Uh, not Game of Thrones. Dale Gribble in Game of Thrones. Oh, my fuck. It might just be because it's late, but it's so fucking funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Pocket saying Daenerys Tar Targaryen. <laughs> oh, my God. That's fucking great. Oh, I'm tired. Okay. Let's get, let's get this done. I'm almost to Japan. I think we're building, like, Korea right now. I think we're building North Korea right now. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to Japan at some point. Hold on. The hell's this shit? <laughs> For the watch, Hank. <laughs> Son of a bitch, that's great. Someone needs to animate that for fucking... So oh, God. Dale Gribble in Game of Thrones. Oh, man. <laughs> For the watch, Hank. <laughs> Implying that Dale is murdering Hank in the fucking... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miss Dragon Lady, may I interest you in some propane? Well, those dragons... Well, I'll tell you what. Those dragons might be spewing their fire, but I want... Hank would give a shit. Hank would be... Hank would only care about dragons because he'd be wondering what kind of fuel they're burning to make the dragon fire. <laughs> Drank, oh, Hank would be like, how, what? I don't know about you, but back in Texas, we use a thing called propane. <laughs> Fucking Drogon is flying around with giant propane tanks on him. <laughs> the comedy writes itself, man. The comedy writes itself. But, Dad, I want to be a court <laughs> Oh, God, please, somebody make this now. I will pay money for this. I really will. Somebody, please. Oh, God. Somebody take this idea, please, and run with it. Somebody with animation skills. And and, and I'll voice act something. I don't know how what King of the Hill character I can voice, but I'll do something. God. Somebody, please. This is beautiful. All right. That's my throne. I don't know you. <laughs> Hank to Joffrey. That boy ain't right. Okay. How's this going to go? Is it going to be Game of Thrones characters as King of the Hill characters? Because that could be funny. But I think what would be fucking better would be King of the Hill characters isekai into the Game of Thrones universe. Because the idea of Hank meeting Daenerys and talking about propane, the idea of Dale joining the Night's Watch, that shit is golden. The idea of, of Bobby fighting Joffrey and kicking him in the nuts. And yes! Yes! Oh, Peggy and Cersei! Holy fuck, that would be great! Oh, God, the egos on those characters would cause a 
fucking singularity. Oh, Peggy would go up to Cersei and be like, well, I'm something of a queen myself, and I'll have you know. And then, like, Cersei would be like, what the fuck is this lady talking about? And just like, oh my god. Uh, do I look like I know what a Drogon is? <laughs> oh man, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. We've created we've we've created marvelous things tonight. We've created amazing things tonight, guys. Uh oh fuck fuck logic. If they've been isekai how do they avoid being killed? Now now it's just Game of Thrones character I mean it's it's King of the Hill characters in Westeros. They're just doing that now. They're doing that now. Oh god, Boomhauer! Who would Boomhauer be? Who would Boomhauer be? Uh, uh I'm trying to think here, man. Oh, I'm trying to think of a good spot for Boomhauer. I'll tell you what, man, yeah, yeah, Zora High, man. Yeah, Lord of the Sun, man. You know, the, the Prince was promised, man. I'll tell you what, man. Oh god. Uh, little fi little finger Boomhauer. <laughs> uh Connie could be Arya. Connie could be Arya. Who would Bill be? Who's the biggest like Bill is just this overweight like washed up loser kind of guy? Who would he be in Westeros? Or who would Yeah. See, now I'm I'm split. I'm split between making them the characters in Game of Thrones and just having them be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hodor. <laughs> He's Hodor. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I gotta finish this. I gotta finish this, but man, that's a funny idea. Holy shit. Alright. Alright, we're almost done. I think... No, this isn't... Wait, is this Korea? No, I think we're... I think this is... Yeah, this is the Korean Peninsula right here we're working on right now. Yeah. Wait. Oh, wait, no, 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 that was, yeah, no, 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 that, okay, no, we're building Japan, we're building Japan now, this is Japan, that was Korea, no, we already have Korea, this is Japan, all right, Bill would be Tyrion, <laughs> okay, yeah, I think it's funnier to, like, imagine the King of the Hill characters, like, talking, it's funny to imagine Bill talking to Tyrion than Bill being Tyrion, it's better to imagine Bill sitting there, like, oh, uh, hey, so you're, you're the hand of the king, huh? Well, that's that's pretty cool. I was a right-hand man once, too. <laughs> my my ex-wife, Lenore! And then Tyrion's like, Shay! <laughs> just like, God. Were you ever married once? <laughs> just like, God. Yeah, that's funnier. That's funnier. Game of Thrones characters interacting with King of the Hill characters. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. It is. I agree. That's better. Yeah. So who would Boomhauer talk to? Who would have who would be the greatest like interaction with Boomhauer? Okay. Oh, pop that out. Alright, but we're building Japan. This is Hokkaido. We're building Hokkaido. This is Hokkaido up here. Hokkaido. Don't cut myself, please. Damn it. Uh, oh shit! Oh, no, we're good. It's like, oh, shit, no, we're good. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's it's fine. Ah, crap, now this is all falling off. No, we're almost done, no! Ah, shit, okay. This goes in here. There we go, there we go. Boom, Howard and Jamie. Okay, I think that works. All right. Dude, just, I'm picturing, okay. Really? Ah, I fucked that up. Ah, wait a minute. Hold up. Okay, okay. No, I fucked it up. We can fix this. We can fix this. Okay. I put this on instead of this. Okay. All right, now this is fine. This is okay. And then instead of, I think I mixed, 
Oh, wait. Oh, fuck. Okay, I see what I did. I see what I did. I was using the wrong piece. Like, it was supposed to be this piece instead of that one. I got it. I think we might still get done by midnight. I have to pop off all these chunks, though. I have to... Okay. Okay, guys. We gotta rip apart Japan here. I gotta rip apart Japan. We gotta start over. We gotta start over and build Japan from scratch. Is this how God did it? <laughs> yeah, God's up there. He's just like, oh man, shit. Oh man, uh, I don't like the way that island looks. So I gotta re re reassess it here. Okay, hold up. <laughs> There's no Japan right now. Hold on. Okay. Ah, rebuilding Japan, just like Nobunaga. Good old Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga! Come on. Like, I'm so close to getting this part done, and now everything's choosing to fall apart on me. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, keep this off to the side. I'm going to need that in a second. Okay, this part. Yeah, this is the... Okay, starting to build Japan again. We're building Japan again. All right. Starting down here in Kyushu. Moving on up to Honshu. And then Hokkaido is up here. Oh, you know what? I think this is Hokkaido. Like this, this is literally all of Japan. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up on the, I'll pull it up on the uh, other one in a second here. Yep. Behold. Japan. <laughs> this, this lower part is like Kyushu and then up to Honshu. I guess Shikoku is not represented here. This is, this is Kyushu and Honshu. And this little part up here is Hokkaido. And then this part up here is like part of Russia. I can't remember the name of this specific part, but the part, you know, even north of Hokkaido, that's like part of Russia, like that part right there. Like by the Sea of Otahask. Yeah. Man, dang, I'll tell you all what, them Starks are getting dang powerful. You gotta move on those territory, man. Them dang old Sansa, man. And look, boom, going up, man. Everyone wants to claim the throne, man. It's like some kind of Game of Thrones, man. Yes. Yes. Teching is a Lego god, yeah. Okay. Let's pop this in here, here. All right. Now we have Japan. Now it's looking like Japan. All right. Nice. And now... Oh, this part's easy, because there's really not much more land left. Just part of Russia. So it's like kind of like part of Russia into like the Bering Strait. Yeah, this is part of Alaska, I think, too, like the Aleutians. Oh my god, I think we're there. And that's thinking where I'm going to call it for the night. It's about, about three hours. I was here for Japan. At least I streamed building Japan. And Russia. But mostly Japan. Alright. Alright. Yep, there we go. Bag nine done. So just moving on to bag number ten. Oh, Hawaii is on here. Just a little dot in the middle of the ocean. Cool. Alright, this is what we got. This is what we got of the earth so far. Indonesia, Japan's right here. Korea's over here. Philippines are down here. Got Vietnam, Cambodia, all that kind of stuff. We have India, Sri Lanka here. The Maldives are not represented. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Africa. Good chunk of Western Africa is missing, but we'll get to that. Europe's up here. Norway, Finland, all that. Russia, Ukraine. All right. Whee! Okay, we built... One quarter of the planet. Yay. Woo. Oh, man.
You is great, but the redneck hick stuff. Uh, I you mean a second ago when I was mimicking Boomhauer off of uh, I keep saying Game of Thrones. I don't know why. Boomhauer off of uh, King of the Hill. That's that's how he talks. That's Mike Judge, man. Um, yeah. I don't talk very redneck. Is my I, I I've been told I have an accent. It's just that I'm from Pennsylvania, so I don't hear the accent. And, uh, do I sound like a redneck? Because, all right. Well, that's just what I sound like, I guess. The Earth! Gotta, gotta work on it more. Uh, I will uh, continue to work on this. I don't know if I'm going to stream any more of it. Uh, because I have all my equipment up here. I gotta bring this downstairs because I have to film a video tomorrow, so... If I do finish it, though, I will make sure to post it on Twitter and everything like that and have it... Pro It'll probably be in the background of a video because this was, this was working on a lot of stuff. Just a basic American voice. All right, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with having a basic-ass American voice. The House of Boomhauer. No, Boomhauer would become, like, a house lord somehow. Yeah. Just a basic ass American voice. Thank you for the stream, man. Yeah. Mmm. This is good. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, shoot. It's good mango. I'm hungry. What am I gonna eat? Might make a grilled cheese. Or um See, could you like a? I might just make like a quick sandwich. I don't see that Cajun accent. Oh, I don't see it, but I have a Cajun accent. Yeah, I'm from Indiana, so it's the same dialect. Yeah, it's yeah, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Chicago's probably a different accent. Boston's a different accent. Mmm, grilled cheese. Oh. What Western cartoon do you think would be interesting to see a crossover with an anime series? Oh, um, I don't think Avatar counts because, you know, it's kind of already anime. I would say Ben 10. Ben 10 or, like, Generator Rex are probably pretty fertile grounds for, like, adapting to an anime. I think it's, it's there. I think you could also do, um, you know, you could probably do, I mean, Rick and Morty's already, but you could do, like, uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I think it also fit pretty good. K&D, probably. Codename Kids Next Door, probably. Pretty easy. Steven Universe, easily, yeah. Cartoons are a lot... Danny Phantom. Cartoons, I'm so glad I grew up in an era where cartoons had, like, a good plot, like a premise. Because, you know, like, the cartoons that, like, my dad grew up with, like, Bugs Bunny and shit back in, like, the 50s and 60s, it, it was all about, like, uh, there was no plot. There, I mean, there was a plot, but it was just, here's Bugs Bunny fucking with Elmer Fudd for 15 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's just that. You know, it's like, I'm glad I grew up in an era where cartoons were like, here's a plot, here's a premise, like a beginning, middle, and end. Sometimes story arcs that take entire seasons. It got it got a lot more prevalent when I stopped watching cartoons. Like, that's when Adventure Time came out, and that's when Steven Universe came out. But still, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Samurai Jack was great. Danny Phantom was great. Jackie Chan Adventures was amazing. Although Jackie Chan Adventures was great, but they just kept recycling the same plot over and over again. Like, season one, let's find the talismans. Okay. Season two, let's find all the demons and seal them. Okay. Season three, let's find the talismans again. Okay. Season four, let's find these masks. Okay, that's different. Season five, let's find the demons again. It's like, oh, it's like, all right, now you're just... You're just repetition after a while. But, like, okay, the first two seasons were good. I liked the mask season. That was good, too. It was basically the same plot for all five seasons. Totally Spies was fun, yeah. I love Ben 10. I watched Ben 10 when it was, like, I was in middle school and a lot of people made fun of me. I remember going up to my friend Adam... And being like, yeah, I watch Ben 10. And he was like, you watch Ben 10? My little brother watches that. Because we were like 12, 13 at this time. And uh, it's not cool to watch cartoons anymore. And uh, I felt a little embarrassed. But I was like, I don't give a shit. I like Ben 10. Ben 10 was awesome. Alien Force was great. Ultimate Alien was great. Didn't watch Omniverse. Didn't watch anything beyond that. But I liked it. Megas XLR was fucking incredible. Megas XLR deserved more than two seasons. Absolutely. They could have went really crazy with that show. 
I'm really pissed that only got two seasons. Then again, I guess you'd be honest. Honestly, if they were going to bring back any fucking cartoon, seriously, anything, Megas XLR. Bring back Megas XLR for the love of God. If you can bring that back for a third season, I'd love it. It doesn't even have to be the original voice cast. I would love it to be the original voice cast. But if you had to switch somebody out or something, um, it'd be all right. I think we could make it work. Um, who voiced Kida? Or was it Kiva? I think it was the same lady that voiced Totsky in Bleach. I can never remember her voice. I don't think it was Michelle Ruff. Kiva. Yeah, Yoroichi. I think Yoroichi. Don't Yoroichi and Tatsuki have the same VA? Might, maybe. Hold on. It's um, Wendy Lee. Yeah, Wendy Lee. Uh, no, that's the chat. Yeah, Wendy Lee. Yeah, Wendy Lee voices Tatsuki and Yoroichi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. No 2000s cartoon will ever come close to Spongebob. Spongebob was 99. I remember when Spongebob first aired. I got this Lego set too. It's really cool. I even modeled it to look like the OP world instead. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, you could. It wouldn't be hard. You just have to have the basic world. Aw, oh, dude, Artur, I mean, you're making me feel like an idiot now because I feel like I should have done that. <laughs> I feel like I should have went and bought a bunch of extra fucking Lego pieces and, and built the One Piece world. Damn it. Well, looks like I have to buy another globe. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. No, but that's... Damn, that would be a good idea. I have the plushie that you made, you designed, so I have the plushie for that. But, dude, that would be a good idea. You just get some red chunks for the red line. It'd be easy. SpongeBob's been around for a long time, yeah. Check out the inside of the Earth, guys. This is the inside of the planet Earth. Good, good look. You don't get to see the inside of the earth for a while. I'll send you a pic of it on Twitter. Damn straight. Awesome, dude. All right. Well, I have this. I have this dome. It kind of looks complete. It looks half complete, and you look at it like this. Whee! Yeah, remember when every MC was Ichigo's voice actor and dub? So, yeah, Johnny Young Bosch. I would love to meet Johnny. He's a cool dude. You ever planning to do more Naruto videos? Yeah, I want to do some at some point. Looks like a watermelon. Yeah, kind of. It looks like I am building some kind of Death Star looking thing, though. Just with the inside of it being mechanical. Oh, wait. I'll build a Death Star that looks like the planet Earth. That's not a planet. That's a space station. Metalocalypse. Yeah, that's a good one. I have seen a little bit of Way of the House Husband. Just a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, 80s cartoons, dude. Like, I, I mean, this was before my time, but they played a lot of reruns of Thundercats growing up. So I remember watching Thundercats. It's like a hat, but it's a globe. Oh, man. Thundercats. I never got into He-Man. Are you tired? I mean, it's like midnight. So, yeah, a little bit. I am going to end it here. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, let me read some through some of the Super Chats, actually, because I have some time left. Yeah. I don't think I got that many. Uh, Smash D World. Let's see what we got here. Uh, did, did I answer that one? Deep Fried Oreos. Kid is Vegapunk number seven. Sea Robots look like their Vegapunk counterparts. One of them looks like Kid. Kid uses Punk in his attacks. 07 on his railgun. He's punk. All right. Kid is somehow the seventh Vegapunk. Or maybe he'll become the Vegapunk later. Maybe not now, but maybe it's that he's fated to become a Vegapunk. I got into One Piece around 2020, and it was through your content question. What do you think Bonnie's fate will be after Egghead? They're going to make it to Elbaf, and I can kind of see her just hanging out with Saul and Kuma. And, um, like, some of the Vegapunks that survive, like Edison and Lilith, will survive. And they'll, like, maybe try to fix up Kuma. And they just kind of take refuge on Elbaf. Like, I don't think they're going to go all the way to the new... I mean, all the way to El Laugh Tale or anything like that. They'll hang out on Elbaf. Eustace Kid is, is Vegapunk 7. Yep. Um, 
What's that candle that's burning? Uh, it's warm apple pie. Warm apple pie. I had a Woodwick one, like a really nice one, but it, it just burned out, so I threw that away. Uh, that's just like a generic Walmart great value candle, but it smells really good. Um, I messed up my donation. I've noticed Oda draws very revealing outfits in Wano, so I was wondering if he even bothers doing underwear. Uh, oh, yeah, so in Wano, fun thing about boobs in Wano. So Oda originally drew the female characters, like when Robin was in her like geisha outfit, like in her kimono, Oda originally drew her boobs as like super defined. Like you could see her boobs like in the outline of the, of the kimono. And I think it was somebody that had to tell Oda, like, that's not how they did it back then. Like, they, they had this shape, so they would pad their breasts to not... Ha like, if they did have big boobs, they would not be shown through that. Like, they would be padded, and it would be, like, you know, like a specific kind of shape. And so Oda decided to do that instead. And so that was, like, a, a, a artistic choice he adapted from real life into One Piece. Because otherwise, it would have been that exaggerated, like, boosh, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like Oda's thinking a lot about... As much as I think about boobs in One Piece, I think Oda's thinking about boobs the vast majority of the time. <laughs> you should do a video on Wiper. I've always intended to do a video on Wiper. I just never got around to it. But it is in the queue. It is in the, in the project folder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, oh my god. Okay, I'll check that band out. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I'll check it out. And on, on Egghead, it's all about the booty. Yeah, he's, he said specifically it's about the booty on Egghead. So I don't know. It's whatever Oda's into at the time. It's like, it goes like, ah, I've been doing boobs a lot. I'm gonna focus on the butt in Egghead. Oh, you know, when we get to Elbaf, it's gonna be all about the legs. The giant women are gonna have huge legs. That's what, that's what they're gonna be into. We're going to focus on Girth's legs. <laughs> you know, that, that'll be the focus there. By the time we get to Laugh Tale, I'm afraid to ask what it's going to be, you know? <laughs> uh, okay. Wiper, no wiping. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry I couldn't finish it, but this is about where I want to call it. So I will finish the earth. I will finish making the earth, okay? It, it took a few million years for this thing to build. I think we're making pretty good progress. Uh, drove through the entire Pennsylvania to watch the eclipse. I'm very scared and upset now how big and royal it is from someone from Jersey. Me and my friends were talking about just doing a road trip over Pennsylvania in August, I think. Me and my friends, Chris and Jake, I think are just going to get in a car and just drive all over Pennsylvania and see, like, all the sights. There is a Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. There is a Grand Canyon in Pennsylvania. There's a place called World's End National Park, which is on the eastern side of the state. It's up by Scranton. I want to go see that. We're going to see the Poconos, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Erie. We're just going to drive around the whole fucking state. So I think we're doing that. We might not, but that's the idea. So we might be doing that. It'd be fun to go on a little journey. All right, a little road trip. All right, everybody. I'm going to get going. I'm going to, go to, I'm going to get something to eat and then head to bed. Thanks for watching. This will be Teching signing out. Later, everybody. Later, everyone.